Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. How you doing, pals? It's <laughs> how you doing, pals? It's me, Matthew from Bish, Bishop Auckland. <laughs> it's spot on. You, I think you need to keep this up. Hi, everyone. It's Joe. It's just you haven't me. said scrummy or just, girthy yet. Welcome Ari, to Ari, Ari, just scrummy, goofy. scrummy, ooh, beefy, gothy. <laughs> Call the Holic Weekly Video Audio Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, it gets quieter as he presents. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. It's Jack from Call the Holic. Back once again. With the Cultaholic re- re- oh, oh. Wrestling Podcast, That's I'm it. under a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, I am Jack, the sole survivor, the jobber, <laughs> to give my full name. Um, because last week, we opened with a lovely bit about how ill we were all feeling. Yeah. And now everyone else had the vid. You probably shouldn't have all made out during the video. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that didn't yeah. help. That but did Joel's not help. back, he's recovered, he's Yay. tested negative. Patient zero over there, Patient he's feeling zero. better. I've, I've done three negative tests this week, so I'm quite confident that I'm all right. Yep. You were feeling poorly. I'm joined by Tom and Fraser, everyone. Hey. Hey. The subs bench has been broken. Oh, yes. No, no, yes, but sometimes that can be a game changer. Oh, yeah, it's a game changer. Oh, you come on late and you, you win the match. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. super yeah. sub. Um, you were feeling poorly yesterday. I Yeah, I had a tiny, actually, yeah. Before we go any, actually, before we get into the into the rigors of the oh, podcast, yes. right, uh, I feel like I need to address something that keeps coming up on here. I've seen comments about it. I've seen a few people make potted references to it. And I feel like I need a bit of a right of reply here. So Duh. permit me for this. I'm oh. just going to say, I personally no, no. really no, love... No, no, no! Really love Tubman in Japan. Tubman I in think Japan. it's yeah, a it's great segment. segment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great segment. I'm annoyed that it. people kind of think it's it should go. And I'm, I think it should be around forever. I've not included it on the running order. We can improvise. We can, yeah, we can yeah. wing it. Um, yes, it's lovely to see you back, Tom, from your month away, your mysterious month away. Mm. It's lovely to see you, Fraser. I sit next to you, you anyway. Sit next yeah. I've not seen you this week, though, really. Not really. Our schedules have... We've, and then I was away time. last week, you so really this week. is the reunion. Yeah. As it's happening live. Yes. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. I'm, I'm not feeling ill, which is really surprising. Neither am I. Feel great. You're fine. I'm fine. We're you, all as fine. As I said, you were, you were feeling poorly. But I only, bit, yeah, I felt a bit ropey yesterday. I'm so scared and, next oh, year, <laughs> <laughs> I've taken two negative tests. Okay. So we're all good. We're, we're, all feeling, <laughs> we're all feeling great and it's been a great week of wrestling. Oh, oh, oh look at that. He's trying to hurtle this along his phrase. Let's you, just get to get, the wrestling. Actually. If we get any more... Uh, Positive COVID cases in the office. Should we do that thing they do with with cockroach infested houses? Just cover the place in tarpaulin and throw, yeah. mm. and throw bombs in. Get Walt and Jesse in, like breaking bars. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. that might be where we That'll need to go. Game, yeah. So we're all. I mean, I mean, I'll ask how Matthew does the. How you? How you? How you? How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm moving flat today. Oh. That's my. That's my cool oh. thing this week. Fair enough. That's yeah. really exciting. Yeah. What about you, Tom? You're getting I'm, the keys I'm today. Not flat. Keys today. Wow. Yeah, keys today. How you're you feel about moving? Uh, it's it's exciting, yeah. It's 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 going to be fun. Having a, I've got a wee balcony. I'm looking forward to that. Ooh, I know. Ooh. Ooh. It's, I get a nice view of the Tyne, the, oh, the grey Tyne, brown oh, it's Tyne. It's a good river. It's, it's a, a pretty it's river. Pretty river with lots bridges. of lovely. Oh, there we go. The bridges. <laughs> <laughs> the stereotype is, is that we love bridges. We, you love river. bridges. I've got the Millennium Bridge outside. Nice. Looking I believe you're on my bridge. side of the river now. I am. Yeah. So no longer in Newcastle. Up the yeah. Gateshead. Gateshead. Whoa. It's funny when play when 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 bands play what they think is Newcastle and it's Gateshead. Mm. Newcastle Gateshead. Yeah, they, they kind of they mush the two together, don't they? It's like when that mania was in New Jersey, but they build it as New York mania. Isn't yeah. WrestleMania technically in Greater Los Angeles? It's in Inglewood. Yeah. <laughs> where... Or to give it its full name, Inglewood Humperdinck. Oh, Thank you very boo. much. Tom's um, back on the, the podcast. Come back next week. <laughs> where the big stadium is, yeah. But then I think. Other events and all that are happening in like downtown LA and stuff. Yeah, I was looking at the map and it's it's I a mean, large area. We looked at all the shows that are taking place over the next week, starting from well tomorrow, right? Mm. Like there's a lot. This weekend is pretty much the kickoff, and it's all over LA. Do you know what TMZ stands for? I, Total but, Monstops Action. Yes, that was, that's there right. We go. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Thirty Mile Zone, which is apparently the, a reference to LA, wow. the LA area, and all wow. the celebrity goss that happens in the Thirty Mile Zone. Ah. Wow. Wrestling. The more you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Speaking of news, let's talk about the wrestling news. There's no intro slate for the news, is there, Joel? It's just straight into the news, isn't it? Matthew tends just to go, ah, the news. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, the news. Uh, according to WrestleVotes via Give Me Sport, Roman Reigns is set to take time off following WrestleMania, but then they added a bit on saying, he's going to take time off should he drop those belts. However, WrestleVotes have then added that the result of Roman versus Cody is still undecided. We talked about this on the news. We did. 
I, it's crazy that we're a week out and they've they've still like yet to decide on a winner. I'm or skeptical. Yet to decide on a winner. I, I don't believe that they haven't. I think they're just mm. saying that to keep us in suspense. But I yeah. reckon Ro- Roman possibly taking time off. I think Cody's. We fought for this before in Roman's reign, but I think Cody's winning. I think he's doing it. It feels it, like Tom. It feels like this is time for Roman to step away, and uh, and for them to 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 put someone new on top. And I think it's going to be Cody. It feels right that it's yeah. Cody. I feel like now feels like a good time. There's been multiple occasions during Roman's reign where we thought maybe now, like as I've said a few times, like being caught up in the Ferrari of Drew versus Roman at oh, Clash yeah, of the yeah, Castle. Yeah, yeah. How silly was I? We but all were. We all yeah, were. Yeah. Except for Ross and Luke. Yes, they both oh, called... wonderful letter to Luke. Yeah, they both thought we were all silly for picking. I had to apologize to Luke after Clash at the Castle because I was watching it with him and he was like, oh, I think that's... Sal- <laughs> <laughs> He's from Essex, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I think that Salo Sakawa might debut and cost Drew. And I was like, Luke, Luke, Luke. Silly. You've not been in this game very long, have you? <laughs> Turns out he has and he did know. Yeah, he did, he was, <laughs> called he it was exactly, saying, yeah. Luke Stradamus yeah. out there. We Absolutely. should get him on prediction. Yeah, we should. <laughs> he knew exactly. What, and he cheered when Solo came out as well. It was... It was heartbreaking. Yeah. I really wanted Drew to win. Goldberg is a free agent and Tony Khan is interested. He told The Bet that Bill's free agent status is something to follow and he has great respect for him as a professional athlete. Yeah, I, I think that the temptation for Tony to get to get Goldberg in, even just for one bit, is too great. I mean, Especially with, the, with it being on TNT. And, and as the spiritual successor to, to WCW. Spiritual yeah. successor to WCW. And you've got a match sitting there waiting for Goldberg versus Wardlow. And that Ooh. could be a very, very good match if Wardle Goldberg wins. loses and, and Wardlow goes over. That's the problem with Goldberg is that he doesn't tend to lose often. You Not very say often. that. Okay. But if you go through like the last like nine or ten matches he's had, oh. his, his win loss record is worse than it's ever been. I can only think of the Undertaker. He did lose to Drew at the Rumble. Undertaker, oh. Drew, yeah. Bobby, Roman. Roman. Oh, he got his win back over Bobby. We did Braun, lose Braun Strowman. Yeah, Bruce Newman, of course. Bruce, he's, yeah. had a, he's a loser. He's Goldberg. rubbish. Goldberg. <laughs> so him. Him. Yeah. So is him. He's rubbish. Goldberg. Feed him to Orange Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joey Janela did make the joke about booking Kota Ibushi versus Goldberg at Spring oh, Break that, that, and just having Goldberg decimate Kota Ibushi. You can't joke about stuff like that, Joey Janela, because as wild as it is, if there was any place it would happen, it would be Joey Janela. <laughs> spring Break, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, oh, sad news now. Will Ospreay's injury is apparently worse than expected, according to PW Insider Elite. Uh, he's been removed from his match over WrestleMania a weekend at Impact's Multiverse United show with Speedball Mike Bailey. A great matchup, one that we had in WCPW years ago, and it, it, it was a it was a real it was a banger. Really good it match. humped. Were you there? Uh, no, I didn't. All oh, right, okay, but it was <laughs> it, it, humped. it humped. That's yes. what the cool kids say now. It yeah, it's cool. People, it people on Twitter say that. They, <laughs> I thought they were saying banger now. No, no, no. Yeah, they go. Oh, this match is gonna hump. Oh, it's like slap. You've got to. It's, yeah, yeah. It's part of the same ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. How long till all oh, that match? It had sex. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> humping. That match was promiscuous. <laughs> that match had a sex. in a safe way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in, not in a safe way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a safe way. They had sex in an hour price. <laughs> um, so Osprey has been replaced by, Her- but the match was really good. He's had another match with Speedball that was really good last year, I believe. But mm. he's been replaced by Hiroshi Tanahashi, which obviously we want Osprey to get well soon and everything. This is a more unique match, definitely. Right. It might not necessarily be a better one in terms of youth and agility. We do like the youths, yeah. But, but <laughs> what in the ring? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But. Um, Tanahashi <laughs> versus Speedball is quite a Joel's laughing behind the yeah. camera. Um, it's a good matchup. I like it. I think it's very, it's fresh. As you say, it's, we've seen Speedball versus Osprey before. Yeah. So Tanahashi in there with Speedball is going to be... He's a bigger boy it, as Again, well. it's going to hump. <laughs> it's going to have I'm gonna, sex. I'm going to start this and I'm going to let this one <laughs> yeah, It's humping. Bray Wyatt versus Bobby Lashley update. Dave Meltzer <laughs> says the match, we've not seen either of them on TV, especially not Bray, for a little while now. Meltzer says it's up in the air whether the bout actually goes ahead. And then Booker T recently said on his own podcast that something is off about the situation and he doesn't think the match will go ahead. Um, what's going It's a mysterious situation. Well, we've heard speculation that Bray Wyatt is out due to a an physical undisclosed issue. illness. Yeah, something like that. Which is yeah. keeping him away. They're not talking about it. Mm. Uh, many people... It's, it's funny how the worm has turned on Bray Wyatt, the pure mm. excitement going into Extreme Rules about the return of Bray, uh, with like with 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 creative freedom, you know, and and how how 
buzzing we were to see the Bray Wyatt story play out the way that Wyndham Rotunda wanted it yeah, to. Yeah. And then it did. And everyone's gone, ooh. It, it, I mean, I don't necessarily mm. blame people for being fickle in this instance because I think it has lost its way slightly. Mm. You know what it, it's just felt like he's gone, oh, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, but he's not got any like end point for the story. I hope that that's not just him. I hope that that's, I hope that's I hope that case it's of not just, his fault. Yeah. Um, because I do when he when he's on form creatively, he's really on form really right Wyatt. There's no one like him. We um, are allowed to change the opinion on that. I think a lot of people yeah. have gone, no, you said you'd like it, therefore you have to Forever. like it. Yeah, yeah. It's like buying the video game Bubsy 3D for the PlayStation. Now Matthew's with, not here. I know. <laughs> Bless. Just... Are we listening at home going, ah, oh, Bubsy. Oh, 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 Bubsy. Bubsy. That's Bubsy, me made Bubsy from, 3D. That's, that's, that's me made from down Bishop Auckland's <laughs> house. <Send that>. <laughs> <laughs> you can get some good quality. Anyway. How are you doing, Bubsy? <laughs> Bubsy 3D for the PlayStation. Mm. Everyone's very excited about a 3D okay. version of Bubsy the Bobcat. I personally was very excited. <laughs> then played it and went, oh, this is rubbish. It sounds like a character you've invented. <laughs> it's, Bubsy in the your, it's in your silly language. Barry the Shark yeah. and Bubsy <laughs> the Bobcat. You know, you're like... Oodly Bubsy the Bobcat. He's, he's stood here. Can you not see him? <laughs> <laughs> he can't see you, Bubsy. Isn't that You're going to fly off on his back later. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> see you later. <laughs> um, yeah, but... so it's, it's, you are allowed to change your mind. Mm. Also, I was buzzing for the Bray Wyatt thing. I've been quite confused for some time. Yes. <laughs> I don't like, I know everyone says, oh, just trust the process, trust the process. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm falling out of trust with the process. A little bit. But. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, if it is indeed a physical issue or an illness or something, we do wish Bray Wyatt a full recovery, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's most important. Um, also, Carmella was pulled from uh, this week's Raw, but Fightful Select have reported that no reason has been given for her absence. It could be anything. Uh, they say the decision was made over the weekend for her to be replaced with Piper Niven to team with Chelsea Green. And there was quite a, almost a bizarrely straightforward story where it was like, Chelsea Green was just like, Carmella's not here. I want Piper Niven to be my... Well, we'll talk about that more later on, yeah. but... Yeah, I, I don't know what's happened there, but it's another instance of a wrestler not appearing on a show they were billed for in the build-up to WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. which is all right. It's yeah. Not, not, nothing serious, injury-related or whatever, but yeah, yeah it's it was a, a strange change. A weird one. Yeah. An odd one. Mm. I mean, it's, um, it's one of those with Carmella, and we've talked about it a few times here. Like, genuinely, she's very good in the role that she has. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that. I think it's easy just to, to downplay what she does, but I think she's a... A great character. Yes. Hope everything's all right. Yes. I thought her and Chelsea Green were were starting, the, the, had the shoots of something quite interesting going on. Mm -hmm. I hope it's something that we can come back to post-WrestleMania. I believe they needed Chelsea Green to have a partner for this showcase match yeah. at mm -hmm. WrestleMania. So uh, it's been swapped out for Piper Niven. Good to see Viper getting a payday. Oh, yeah. It is good. Oh, yes. your, your, your cousin Scotland. Viper. Scotland. Oh, yes. Scotland. Yeah, I'm, I'm cousins with everyone. Freedom. You are. <laughs> that, that was... That, that was... Whoa. The wrestling news. Matthew actually said before, like, he's still, obviously, he's still testing positive, unfortunately. Yeah. But he's feeling okay, I think. Um, he did he did reach out and said, you can laugh at me if you want, Jack. Use puppet Matthew. Now, I don't know whether he means quickly construct, like a whole a new whole puppet. puppet. Even though I didn't even make the first one. Yeah. Or does he just mean pretend the puppet Jack is Matthew? But the puppet's nowhere to be seen. I think he keeps it. He, he keeps, keeps it. I think he keeps it at home, yeah. I think, Matthew, let us know in the comments below <laughs> if you keep Puppet Jack at home. Is it weird? Can I can I complain no, I about it, this? It could be workplace harassment. I bet he probably keeps it pride of place in a shelf. That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, a, you know, like people who have stuffed toys on their beds with loads of pillows. You're right in the center. This is just my little oh, puppet friend. Jack, it's time for bed. No, 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 no. <laughs> puppet goes off. You know? <laughs> and everything goes off. Yeah. Would, you, would, would you say that humps? Oh. That absolutely humps. And that was <laughs> the wrestling news. <laughs> Yes, it's time for everybody's favorite segment, including yours. My favorite. Tubman in Japan. Uh, this is, according to Joel, this is all he's said this week. He's doing so well. That's his new house. Oh, it's Congratulations. Like, that's gorgeous. He's Tubman has made it in he's Japan. treating his trip to Japan like GTA Online. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick trip to Nara. Oh, oh my God. creature. What's that? Is that some sort of deer it, or something? It looks like, and I hope it doesn't get us flagged, but a dick dick. <laughs> What's Would, he doing? Do they hump? What's he saying? Oh, yeah. What have you done there? That's an animal. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Wasn't, wasn't Dick Dick one of the characters from Bottom? Oh, it's Richard Richards. Sorry. What's, what's lanterns? lanterns? Lanterns are Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. lovely. Beautiful. Oh, oh wow. I like the yeah, garden. It's back garden. 
Yeah. Well, he's invited lots of people around as well. <laughs> Housewarming for Richard Tubman. Yeah. There is all his mates from, from Japan Incorporated. They've all come around. Richard's actually doing a massive bike ride soon across Japan, I think. Or a, mm. like wow. a long he, I mean, he's been doing quite a lot of trips. On he's his doing plate. a big one. He's but doing... also, he's editing one of my lists. So I hope he does that first. First, and then <laughs> does the bike. Yeah. I hope yeah. he does it during. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gets the audio More mixed up. Way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's happened at the edit? This one's rubbish. <laughs> that was... The idea of being wobbly, because he's on his... Yeah, <laughs> you hear wind howling. <laughs> that was... Tubman in Japan. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. We're whizzing through, we've realised, without Ross and Matthew here. To, I've realised that Ross and Matthew might be the primary culprits when it comes to the length of the podcast. Not that that's a bad thing. No, no, because people people love the long... Oh, yeah. Every Friday from my streams, folk go, tell me how long it is. And I'm like, it's probably... Whoa, whoa, it's whoa, probably whoa. I know, and right? let's talk about the podcast. innuendo is this phrase I'm coming out with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Goodness on fire me. today, you know? Yeah. Um, they, all, they always ask how, lo- how long it is, and it's it's usually about four hours. The, the, Bloody the, the hell! Yes, I know. <laughs> it is usually about that long, yeah. yeah. See this as like a breakwater, Stamina. because... WrestleMania's coming up. That podcast's going to be long. Yeah, you're going to want to block out about about seven hours. Incidentally, if you do want a long podcast to listen to this week, can I recommend the Side Scrollers interviewing Dark Side Phil? Oh. It's five hours. Oh, <laughs> oh it's quite long. Notorious internet man DSP having a having a chat with Side Scrollers and then taking him to task on all his uh, all his wrongdoings and weirdness. It's uh, it's it's an uncomfortable listen at points. It's a roller coaster. Oh wow! It was nearly my Hall of Fame pick. I don't know. But I'm going to give it a nod here. I don't know the situation, but surely he would at some point just get sick of the interrogation and go, "I'm out." He's I'm done. Yeah. Five, five hours. Five oh. hours. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a listen. Well, now it's time for the Hall of Fame. Um, so, in condescending order, as Matthew says, but really he means descending, descending order. order. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, in third place, Owen's school story with twenty two percent. Owen uh, had a spelling test once. In year eight, which I think is quite late for a spelling test, but how old are you in year eight? Like, oh, you're Scottish, aren't you? Right, I am. That's yeah, like yeah. grade thistle. Oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> that's so rubbish. Grade that's, thistle. That's grade freedom. <laughs> um, that's grade battered Mars bar. Oh, I love oh. that. Grade. Um, we have your prime... twelve and thirteen, I think. So S two. Right, your second, second year, year of senior of school, yeah, year. yeah, or middle school in some instances. Um, Just the two up. He had, a, he had an argument with his teacher because he said it was. I was like, oh, and I thought you'd be really well behaved. Oh, was argumentative. He said that he had a cheeky year in year eight because he'd fallen in with the football lads. Cheeky lads. Cheeky and, lads. Um, absolutely. And uh, he said that um, basically the teacher, the whole class had done badly on the spelling test. Yeah. The teacher was fuming and said, tomorrow we're doing the test again. And if you don't improve, you're in detention. Owen improved marginally. Okay. He got like a couple more words right, still got put in detention. And he was like, miss, that's not. What are you on. doing? Yeah. That's great, but that's what great. are you doing? Um, so she put him in detention anyway, and he was fuming. He got that sent is, out. He argued with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's never been the same. No, no. Whose pick was that? Was that yours? Owen's. Well, mine via. I got Owen in. You got tell us. Yeah. Oh, I missed. I, I should watch that. He, yeah, he, he yeah. got brought into the contamination room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, he survived. survived. Yeah, wow. he survived. Ask Owen to tell you it. For goodness sake, don't ask him to write it down for no, you. No, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Uh, second place, Ross's pick, I believe. The beautiful friendship between Becky Lynch and LA Knight. Some salacious rumors online that they used to go out. And even if they did, so what? Yeah. Mm. But LA Knight came out and went, that's not true at all. We were just good friends. Friends. Just mates. Fair enough. Just mates. Pictures of them like it looked like mid frolic in the field. Like she was on his shoulders. Yeah, you know, he's going ah. like yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Tommy, <laughs> and oh, and the winner of the Hall of Fame, even though he's not here to accept the award, yep. is Matthew with Yorkshire Rugby commentary. That was diabolical. <laughs> it was this video you might have seen it before. It's Castleford Tigers against another team with I believe the Castleford commentary, mm. and um, there's like a foul. And the, the commentator's just really biased. That were diabolical. Send him off. <laughs> Thou should be sent off. <laughs> um, Matthew wins. Matthew Yorkshire wins. Yorkshire rugby commentary. I don't know what visual you want to use to represent that on the you know on the screen, but just a sure rugby ball. Something good. Something Joel fun. hates that rugby team though. He says he's been raised to hate that rugby team. Yeah, so Cast Cast who's, your, who's your rugby team? Featherstone Rovers. 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 They're not real. I know it's weird. <laughs> they don't sound like a real team. Like Featherstone Rovers. Like it's from Enid Blyton. It sounds, yeah, like, yeah, it does. It, it sounds like they're like the, the antagonist of Dream Team on Sky One. <laughs> <laughs> 
Harchester United just can't beat Featherstone Rovers. If only so, they'd stop bloody having affairs with each uh, other's wives. Oh, if, only they, if only Linda Block could pay back the money she stole from the company. I don't know. I don't Enough know. about Dream Team. It's but been a while. I remember as a kid being excited to watch it because I thought it was like actually to do with football, not a soap based around a football team. But I've always it was always very clever how they they use footage from real games. Did they? For the thing, but they they would add in like Harchester United like colours and signs. And in stuff. my mind. Very clever for the time. Uh, in my mind, I'm hoping it's rubbish. <laughs> like <laughs> in front of a green screen going. <laughs> <laughs> in hindsight, it might you know, in, in hindsight it might be. I'm not it's been a, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I remember at the time thinking, ah, oh, it's very clever. Goal three is a bad film for Goal that. Harder. Goal 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 Tokyo Drift. Goalio Drift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goalio um, Drift. So I'm trying to work out who's turning who's Matthew start. and who's so you're, you're, you're Matthew, you're aren't you? No, because I haven't thought you of one yet. You were coming in to replace so. Matthew first. So you're Matthew. Was I booked in first? Yes. All right. So you I'm can, replacing Ross. You're right, Ross. Right, you're you're you. Matthew. I'm me. Standing in. <laughs> from I like how the only slight question I'm me. is I'm, I'm, me. I'm Jack. A bit existential yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll start, yeah, we'll start with Tom, then Fraser, then myself. All right. Yeah. For the Cultaholic Hall of Fame, I'm going to nominate my father-in-law, John Hammond. Right. He is, he is some this man. Pick. We love John yeah. on this podcast. I'm nominating John Hammond. So uh, I was away for four weeks, you as were. you know. Uh, I got kidnapped by Adam Petiti. You did. You did. And, but, but whilst being um, kidnapped and, and seeing the error of my ways and Adam Petiti now being my best friend in the whole world. Strange. Um, I took a little trip to Australia. Oh, just in the meantime. Casually. Casually yeah. took a little trip to Australia. Uh, because, so, so this goes back... This goes back to sort of just before Christmas time where uh, I had a chat with my father-in-law and he'd said, I want to surprise Alex's mum. So his partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah Alex's mum. Uh, yeah, my mother-in-law. Yes. Yeah. Um, and because uh, they're going to Australia for a wedding, he said, we'd love you and Alex to come with us. Mm. You know, um, we'd, we'll make that happen. We won't tell Alex's mum that you're coming with us. Okay. It'll be a surprise. Yes. So we went, all right, we'll do it. I got the time off from here. I said, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, set up a payment plan for the rest of my life <laughs> to, <laughs> to cover it. Uh, and um, we kept this secret from then until when we eventually left. You and John. Me, John, and secret. Alex. Yeah. From her mum. From, yeah, from, yeah. from Lady Beverly. Okay. Uh, and we didn't tell... So, but there, we, the numerous phone calls as to why, like, John was being shifty and money was being moved into a different accounts and why, like, she couldn't see, like, the layout of the seating for the plane or anything <laughs> like that. Or any of the... Because all the accommodations for four people. Four people. It seems really dodgy when so you... So dodgy. <laughs> so she, like... And I, I had numerous phone calls. That's my mistress's plane. <laughs> <the> plane <scene. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Numerous phone calls where, like, Alex was on the phone to her mum and her mum was going, something's going on. Like, something's weird. Something's, your, dad, your dad's keeping something from me here. And we're going, oh God! Yeah. Uh, we we're fighting to keep this secret, and then the the night we revealed everything, like you, I watched as as uh, it was the, it was at um, Manchester Airport before we the night before we flew, uh, we were we went to meet them for dinner, mm. and we were already sat at the dinner table when. John and Bev turned up, and then Bev's face when she saw Alex and oh. brought her, gave her a hug. And she was getting emotional. You, thinking, you sent me the video of it. Yeah. It's really, really cute. It's lovely, <laughs> it's lovely. But the best part was, Beverly just thought we were meeting them for dinner before they flew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we went, we're coming with you. Yeah. You've traveled, <laughs> you traveled to Manchester Airport to sit for a meal. Those <laughs> airport pints, man. Really, <laughs> really quality. <laughs> Cheap as well. Yeah. Uh, but I watched John's shoulders just drop in that moment, like this secret's finally out. And we went on, like, you know what? Like we had the best time. We yeah. laughed. We laughed for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, and uh, and John's great company. Like I'm oh. very lucky to have a father-in-law that I genuinely enjoy the company of. And hopefully, I think likewise, he enjoys my company as well. We're both old radio tarts. Exactly. Who quite enjoy talking about that. He, you've got a good voice for radio in one way, but he also has a good voice for radio. He has got the greatest voice, voice yeah. oh my God. for broadcast. He reminds me a bit of. Um, Oh, what's he called? Withnall in Withnall and I. Oh, nice. Uh, what's he called? Is it Richard E. Grant? No. With that Richard, Richard E. Grant, no. Richard, no. This is absolutely... Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not as cringy as him, <laughs> but it, though the good part of Richard E. Grant. Richard E. Grant? Richard E. Grant is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the, but one of the, the reasons way he speaks is amazing. But we were going over for this wedding, and the, one of the reasons why we we're going to this wedding, obviously, because they're family friends, and uh, I've been very uh, very much welcomed into the circle. Mm. But John was the master of ceremonies for the wedding, so that, oh, as you know, that's pretty cool for her. That's that's <laughs> a cool, and, and, and a, what no finer a guy could you yeah, find? Yeah, to yeah. Do Did it? you know the bride or the groom? The I wedding? met yes, because I met them at uh, another wedding oh, previously when they came over to the UK. Uh, so I've met them. I've met them previously. 
And uh, oh, they're lovely. They're oh. just great. They just—it's just—it's. Oh, if you it, got, if you want anyone to be the MC at your wedding, it's, it's got to be. He was, he was so man. charming at your skeptic. engagement party. Just coming over and just speaking to everyone. So yeah. you might be wondering why do me and Fraser know Tom is like father-in-law? Yeah, yeah he's it's because perverts. we were at, <laughs> we, we were at Tom's We've engagement also went party. to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we were just going to go to the airport <laughs> for a quick dinner with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, we were at Tom's engagement party. Thank you for inviting us along. Hey. And it was a lovely night, full of. Full of radio people. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was, was a lot, a lot of people of, from Radio Newcastle. There was there. a lot of charisma packed into that room, but none more so than John, who um, at one point I asked him a question saying, like, do you, and it was something to do with you and radio, and I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but like, do you two get along talking about radio? Is that how you first got, got to know each, each other, other or something yeah. like that? And he answered it like, a job interview was amazing. Like, <laughs> he gave such a structured and thoughtful answer and then went, no, but listen, Tom's great. And I was like, yeah. Oh, it, it, it was like a full rehearsed speech. It was a really like positive answer. Off yeah. the cuff. I don't know how he did it. He's just What a, a pro. promo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Think about this, right? He is, he is a promo king, is John Hammond. Oh, man. Uh, next year, Alex and I get married and we've blocked out about an hour for speeches. <laughs> <laughs> It makes sense. Because yeah. like, cause like, I'm going to have some silliness to say. Yes. Alex wants to say some words. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I've got a brilliant best man in my mate Dan Guest who's got some things to say. Oh, my God, your best man's called Guest? <laughs> That's <know>. incredible. <laughs> oh, I'm so, quite literally the guest of honor. That's amazing. Uh, and then, of course, the, fa the, the father of the bride is oh, going to speak. And I'm excited to see what John falls out of the He bag. should have, a, like, a CM Punk entrance. Yeah, he should sit yeah, cross-legged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's clobbering time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John's going to watch this and be very confused. By you're going to have to send this to him. And he's, I hope he gets in the Hall of Fame. John, thing you might not remember. I didn't have a hat on at the time. <laughs> Take your hat off so he recognizes. No, not on camera. <laughs> they made Joel do that the other week. Really? Yeah, you can't ask him to remove his hat without... They'll see the snake. And you said you hadn't washed your hair. I don't even know. And it, Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was fine, but I understand the terror, though. Yeah. Especially with these lights, man. <laughs> It was, so gre yeah. John, it was so greasy. It was Big disgusting. Bullies. <laughs> um, it was. It was that with the Blackpool Combat it was Club. Matthew. Or bigger bullies <laughs> than that. It was Matthew. Even bigger bullies. Oh, wow. Wow. Biggest he, went, bullies. he said something about how I can't remember what the point of it was, but he was, it was something. Like. Oh yeah, we were talking about what wrestler did you? And um, like? he was like Joel. Oh, right. like, Joel, get on here. Joel sat down. He was like, oh, God, you don't look like anyone, pal. Take your hat off. I was like, this is quite demeaning. <laughs> Anyway, I've just remembered as well another another caveat oh, I want to chuck look at in. The stringies. Um, I can't, I can't Joel, do, do you have your 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 Slack open? Do, yeah. oh, Get whoa. your Slack out for the lads because you you might remember this, but I think this is a fun little thing to share. Okay. Uh, so we go to Manchester Airport to to do the big reveal. Mm. Yeah. And we're sat having dinner, and uh, it's. Send it to Andrew. I'll send it to Andrew. All right. Yeah, we'll oh, will you put it in so the post? Or are we going to watch it now? We're going to put it... It's only a picture. It's, oh, sorry. It's just a picture. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's only a picture. I'm going to send this down. So, we'll have, so we have dinner. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about oh, how excited we're going to be to get to to get over there and do all this great stuff. And and I realise that somebody sat to the right of me. Oh. And I'm thinking, I recognise who that is, but I can't... I can't put my finger on where I know them from. And, and, it, and, I, and I'm going to pop this here because okay. obviously there is a... Uh, there's a there's a certain sect of football fans. Oh, I'll not get this. Uh, who I'm listen really to sorry. this I know, podcast? I know who it is. I know who it is. <laughs> I've seen it as well. I'm sad that no one's here. To, I'm sorry, Ross isn't here to, to truly appreciate this. I've just sent that through to uh, Andrew Slack. It's still sending. It might be there. We go. It's sent through. Oh, now. Uh, it's a lovely. Picture. It's a lovely picture. It's but not for, a for lovely football, picture. for the football fans amongst us, ladies and gentlemen, my new best friend, Steve, Steve Bruce. Bruce. That's Jay Leno, <laughs> former, <laughs> former. Former Newcastle and Sunderland manager. And West Bromwich and Albion. West Bro all of our teams. Oh, I know. Sunderland. 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 Yeah. Now, Steve um, Bruce has a bit of a, uh, would it be fair to say, has a bit Newcastle of a... Newcastle fans don't like him. Mm, nor do West Brom fans. The Baggies oh, aren't fans oh. either. Who, Birmingham, Who does? Birmingham City, like Wigan maybe as well, I think he was good for. Man United fans because he was a legendary player for them. Mm. Uh, in his defense, I know there'll be people who will be booing because there's the people who aren't fans of what he does. They're fans of who he is. He was charming, Carnot. Oh, he seems like... No a, faults. He seems like a lovely man. He's yeah. a down-to-earth, northeastern boy. Yes. Andrew might now be very confused why you've just sent a photo of yourself <laughs> and Steve Bristow. <laughs> I'm going to give no context. <laughs> he's, he's, you know what? 
all is forgiven on my for, uh, for my part from Sunderland for, for fans. That from a smile, Sunderland fan. For that smile. Because he just seems it's like a, a good smile. He seems it? genuinely. It's not like one of those bored pictures where they're like, oh, yeah. he's buzzing. It's a strong smile. Yeah. It's almost as if he's actually taking the photo with you. He's I, going like, <laughs> my, <laughs> Tom Campbell. I wish. Oh, I, I love wrestling. Oh, is that John Hammond? Oh my god. Is that John Hammond? I'll ask him for permission for next week, hopefully. But I need to. My mate once met Rio Ferdinand in a train station, and oh, the picture Rio Ferdinand's fuming like he's gutted to have been asked for a picture my mate then realized this and thought well i'm not going to smile either so it's just two blokes going <laughs> <laughs> it's so good and now he works in for sky sports like he is a sp- he's in the industry so he'll see real so maybe he'll bump into real and be like right. the, uh, so the train station? <laughs> anyway that was, how we look sad at each other that was for my mate ron oh, and john hammond up oh, the ron but, john, but john. yeah let's not lose sight of the, the issue john hammond for Cult of Holocaust Hall of Fame. My oh, father-in-law yes. for Cult of Holocaust Hall of Fame. Not Steve Bruce, but John Hammond for the Cult of Holocaust yeah, Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Bruce is like his second. He's like, he can step yeah. in if needed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> up the baggies. Uh, up the baggies. Uh, Fraser Porter. So I, I woke up today forgetting to actually have a Hall of Fame. Same. And then, you know, it's one of those things. It, it just slipped my mind. And I thought today was going to be like any other day, but it's not like any other day. Because about an hour before we came in here, Tom said something that's changed changed my life oh. busted is going on tour again with a 20th oh. 20th anniversary oh. <laughs> i know right <laughs> they're doing their greatest hits oh jesus like genu- i didn't know this song i, I know it was, it was announced in... this morning tell him who's supporting him hansen what <laughs> what's going I know. on this September, <laughs> I, I, pff, my mind was blown. I, I can't believe this. I'm, I need to get tickets. And it's the same week I'm also going to see my other favorite band, Half Moon Run. Okay. So I'm going to go see two in the same week. That's a big oh, week. Oh, it's a big week for me. I can't believe that. They're coming back, 20th anniversary. Bop. Yeah. Penny and Me. That's a yeah. lesser known I'm, Hanson song. B- it's Busted's a lovely the song. main focus here. Oh, not yeah, Hanson. Thunderbirds are go, blaring out in the Great utilita. Oh, oh. Should we, what, are our, what are the best Busted songs? Glad I crashed the wedding. Great song. Yeah, great song. I like John Hammond's Hamm's an- Hamm- anthem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not John Hamm. A different person. John, John Hammond. John Hammond's anthem. Air, Air Hostess, Thunderbirds Argo. Mm. Some of my favorites. What I go to school for. Classic. Classic. Year 3000. Some album tracks are great as well. Yeah. Meet You There is a lovely mm-hmm. acoustic ballad. Some of their newer stuff is also really good, but it looks like no. they're just doing... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it looks like they're just going to do the, the classics, the, the anthems that we're familiar with Busted. Oh, I've seen them once. Oh when in 20... I want to say 2015. Yeah. Um, we just were there, but, but Busted were the main event. And um, they were really good live. Yeah. Their drummer was a YouTuber called Kobus, who does, he's a South African bloke who is an amazing mm-hmm. drummer. And I was like, that, it was Kobus. They're also being supported by another band. Was it The Tyne? Yeah, like called, it's, 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 it's another group called The Tyne are on the board. The and The Tyne? Tyne. Yeah, they're called the, the Tyne. Like the, river. the River, like The River. And I listened to one of their songs, and they're a bit like, I'll be damn a singer in a band. Oh, like, you want to get Home Truths like, on there? Like, oh, they're yes. more pop punk. Oh, oh my yeah, God, yeah. they should be on there. Mm. But I just couldn't believe it. Wake, waking up this morning, I thought this was going to be just a regular Thursday. It's not. It's not. It is not regular Thursday busted. They broke up when they I was got... six. I need to see you them. You didn't even really get them oh. the first time around. No, I, I listened every single week to the charts, been hoping that they would be number one. You were a bit young for them at that point. Some of that looks quite raunchy. I really, I was massive busted fan. I would, I, I was like constantly listening to them. We'd sit in the so car. Good. I'd be like, Mum, can you put on? We had like the burnt Wait, the CDs. is it you who's more of a McFly boy? No, I'm busted. Good, good, yeah, good. I was like, gutted when Mick busted came together because I was like, I'm not. McFly sucks. Guitar. Mini, 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 mini. Nah, rubbish. rubbish. No, busted, busted. Are the superior of the two. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I like McFly, some of their songs. I was I was so diehard busted, I just, no. no I think no, I brought McFly. this up in the office once and McFly had more goodwill than busted and I was appalled. Appalling. Uh, you strike me as more of a McFly leaning person out of the two. Neither. Neither. Uh, I probably would go McFly. Oh, oh, I go McFly. So you're not, gonna, you're not jumping at the chance to see Busted in September? Twenty well, anniversary, though. What I will say oh, is wow. <laughs> they're really good lives. I know. I'm so excited. Um, my favorite members... I don't know. Who's your favorite member? Uh, so probably... I, I like Charlie when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, But I think Matt now. I think Charlie's the most talented. But I was... But Matt's the, the coolest. I was disappointed, though, because I... I when Look, see, we're, like, we're like teenage girls. Right, Which was your favorite? favorite was, was it Charlie that went off and did? He did his own thing. Fight Star. Fight Star. Yeah, yeah, right. Raise your rifles. Yes, and yeah, a solo, solo album as well, mm. which is um, more introspective and thoughtful. But I was hyped last year. Because like I was like, I'll never get the chance to see Busted Live. 
They're done. They never well, come I back. I thought this about the Libertines, which mm-hmm. is slightly cooler, but by no, song, sorry. Matt Willis was in Waitress the Musical in Newcastle. I was like, well, this is my only chance to Waitrose see a part. Waitress the Musical. Waitress. Sorry. Not Waitress the Musical. <laughs> no, 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 no. Waitress the Musical. Right. So I was like, this is the only time I'll get to see a bit of busted, but no, 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 September. I just want Waitress the Waitress Musical. Waitress the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is far too there expensive is, yeah. in here. Yeah. We've got a great British Bake Off the Musical, so it, does, it wouldn't surprise me now. There's a villain Waitress. song. We are the Tesco boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to smash your gaff. <laughs> no! <laughs> Put the club card prices up. What a flipping laugh! Like how you make... We'll stand up for Waitress. <laughs> <laughs> like how in, the, in this musical version, you've made the villains northern. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, oh. It's a little pretty. What's yeah, lack yeah. up? No. <laughs> it's that really funny University. girl on... Was it... Never heard yeah. of it. <laughs> Tiny hey, Cliff Waitress, why are you Cliff looking so Waitrose. sad here in the 80s? <laughs> I had a dream that I'd open a super <laughs> <laughs> With machines that oh, you check God. out yourself with. <laughs> There's a, I can just imagine a big choreography piece with... Stop Stack the shelves, stack the shelves. <laughs> Sorry for making Tesco the villains, by the way. I used to work in Tesco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite villainous. They've raised the <laughs> oh! prices of everything and slashed the club cards. Yeah, Waitrose, famously a working man's super <laughs> Working man's pub. <laughs> That's yeah. a man's shop. <laughs> Cliff Waitrose, you'll never amount to nothing. I'll, I'll be show quiet, you. Michael Tesco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, show yeah. you one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jay Sainsbury. I'm just in the background. <laughs> Jay Sainsbury. See, so yeah, busted. Busted gone on tour. Yeah, I'm buzzing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Put Sorry. Waitrose the musical in the Hall of Fame now. Waitrose no, no, yeah, mine's Waitrose the musical now. <laughs> yeah. My so original. Busted, busted in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. I'll go for my my picks. Rubbish. So I was gonna go for just rubbish. Mine, but I might just go <laughs> for Waitrose the musical. Rubbish. I might go for Waitrose the musical. That's good. Yeah. Uh, mine was going to be, because Tom had gone to Australia, but now you've already kind of talked about that. Mine was going to be the song Waltzing Matilda, which I think is a lovely song. You can still talk about Waltzing Matilda if you want. It fills me with a, a, a Australian pride that I have no reason for having. I just, I, I wish I was Australian. <laughs> and then I once mentioned this because it was on and I was like, it's Waltzing Matilda. And Pacini was like, I love this song. And I was like, me too. It makes me kind of wish that I could be put. And Pacini was like, I feel exactly the same. We've both uh, been affected by the song in the same wow. way. Have you had the Rod Stewart version? No, I don't. It's a bit, it's a bit ballady. You'd oh, like right, it. oh, fair enough. Then. Yeah, oh. it's quite ballady. But um, I'll go for Waitrose the musical. Waitrose, <laughs> yeah, the musical. Yeah, yeah. Someone needs to write that. If Can you, someone listening, write Waitrose the musical. No, no, they will. <laughs> Don't. No, 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 I won't. I won't. I won't. I will. Some of, we've got some really. The, I remember Benny and the Banditos who wrote. I can the, get a cast together. I know I've got contacts. The guy, if you if you still listen to this, Benny, he wrote. Um, the Snooker Loopy, but he rewrote it as the AW Dynamite. Oh, thing. what So a someone guy. please do it. Waitrose the musical. It was amazing as well. We couldn't play it on here because of copyright, but surely amazing. Waitrose would be the villain. Is it like Hamilton? Where... No, nah, like musicals are written by the upper class anyway, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, is but, it like Hamilton? Yeah, it could be ha- like Hamilton. It was like Tesco's Aaron Burr. I loved him. I <laughs> I slept with him, and I'm the one that price matched him. <laughs> Bingo, oh, Aldi. <laughs> My name is Alexander Waitrose. Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> There's a million <laughs> souls. Just, Just you wait. We're outnumbered, <laughs> outplanned, <laughs> outpriced, matched. Morrison's <laughs> gonna make red coats red. <laughs> 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 I said, I'm going to Tesco. It's cheaper there. <laughs> You'll be, be back <laughs> soon. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> What's going on, Joel? Oh no! Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Joel is Joel Joel's is booting up. Come on, Joel. Zero, Joel. Joel's brought up um, the infamous AI. What's it called? Chat. Chat GP thing. The, the one you see screenshots of and you go, that's too. That's uncanny. That's weird. But this it's terrifying. Is, you, oh, he's got an account. He's and everything. got an account. He's got this. Oh, you're, I've got an account. You're with... like Cipher from the Matrix. Oh, you got one as well. Helps we get the workload done. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. But yeah, we chose the musical. Oh, okay, no. so. Uh, Joel is putting into <coughs> into chat GPT. How long does it take to write Waitrose? Oh, seconds. No, that's oh, scary. Write Waitrose the musical. So here we go. It's this is riveting for audio content. But here cool. we go. Wait, I, I feel like it could be quite a successful uh, successful. Is your show. middle name begin with O, or is that just Joel J O there? Uh, why would it say that? Your profile picture uh, is just J O. J O. Wait. Oh, oh, here we go. Waitrose the, the musical. musical. Is, is a heartwarming, heartwarming and hilarious, hilarious. production. <laughs> yes. It tells the story of a group of employees oh. and customers. And customers. And oh a waitrose. God. Can we leave this going for a bit? <laughs> we'll come back to that. Yeah. Let's say at the end of 
SmackDown. So right. is that your no, that's your nomination for the yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, John, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you were a supermarket chain. Yeah, John, if you'd be been a whimsical musical made up on the cuff, yes. off yeah. the cuff about a supermarket chain, maybe you'd have got the it. The computers are going to... Take over. We're going to... Yeah, it's going to end humanity. When, when the podcast is AI, give it time. I wouldn't be surprised if next week Sam goes, I've got an idea, guys. AI <laughs> podcast. Oh, my God. Sam, you've got your... Is that not your... Is that not... Putting there enjoyment noise in. You can yeah. get that Putting in. enjoyment noise in. Cultaholicshop.com. Cultaholicshop.com. For all of these Hall of Fame nominations, you can head to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic and cast your vote. This week, we'll try and put it up without a day left to go. That was, to be fair, Ross went, that, he put his hands up when that was my fault, but he is ill. So but I understand. Thanks like, to everyone for voting. Yeah. We got a decent amount of votes Did last we? minute. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, patrons. And don't worry, Ross. And it's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's all humping. Why am I doing... Yo, guys. <laughs> Payroll.com forward slash Calderholic. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ah. Yes, welcome back to the... Wait, that's not what Matthew did. Um, oh, uh, ah, Smackdown. This week in wrestling. Ah, um, and then after Smackdown, we'll check back on Waitrose the Musical. We yep. saw <laughs> that the AI had written Act 1 and then it crashed. But we've got Act 1 yep. in the bag. Um, Smackdown, I've called it The Roads to Reconciliation. Oh! That's clever. You're good at these, Jack. Well done. Matthew no sells a lot of the ones I'm more proud no, we'll of. We'll hype you up a bit. Thank on you. This. Well, no, that's the best one this week. They're rubbish. See, you're underselling yourself now. I don't think now. I even did a dynamite one. You, you've undersold yourself. What? I'm, I'm not going to look at, I'm not gonna look at the rest just yet, but I hope they're good. Cody Rhodes opens the show and brings out both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Cody credits Owens with putting him in contact with presumably the Young Bucks. He doesn't yeah. name them, but... Uh, and wants Kevin and Sami to reconcile. Cody and Sami try to get Kev to agree, but he asks why would he fight for someone who doesn't even want to be his friend? Oh, what oh. a way to kick off SmackDown, What though. a way to kick off SmackDown. Oh, oh, hey. It was a great segment. Do, what, do, we'll talk about it maybe a bit more towards the end of the show. Mm-hmm. What do you make of Cody's role as... Chief mediator. Yeah. I think I quite enjoy it because it's like he's trying to unite a, a force against the bloodline. And it, it it's allowed him to naturally sort of insert himself into the program. Is it naturally? I, th- <laughs> I think it's it's worked quite well because okay. he's like, he sees that to have the blood, having the bloodline at its full strength with no one else backing him up is a bad move. So this is now showing a united force, which we've not seen since War Games, but wasn't oh. good enough to get the job done because Sammy was on the other side. Yes. No, now, I... He's opposite them. I would agree. I, I didn't like it at first. I found it too mm-hmm. sentimental, and it was Cody at his most sincere, when often I find him good when he's a little bit more knowing. Okay, yeah. But, actually, once I realized he might be doing this also to weaken the bloodline, I'm fully on board now. So I'm, I'm really engaged with this story. Like, it's it's hooked me really, really well. Mm, what do you think of it, Tom? You ever seen Desperate Housewives? <laughs> um, bits. So uh, we're up to the season watching it again. <laughs> We're up to the season now where Edie has returned with her husband Dave, who has Dave. David, who has got um who's who has an agenda. He wants to get his hands on Mike Delfino. Oh yeah. So he's doing so by by getting a, ba- a garage band together with Tom, Lynette's wife, Orson, who's Bree's wife, and Mike. Knowing that Mike loves a bit of the music and he's a very talented musician, it's a way of kind of and, and Dave's in the band as well on drums. Dave's it's, the Cody. Yeah. So okay. Dave is trying but so Dave has had to encourage Lynette to let Tom form a garage band so he can Gosh. join it. He's and now he's in the point of going, we know who we should get on 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 guitar. We should get Mike Delfino. And he's like, oh, I don't think Mike wants to do it. He lives too far away. Uh, to the point where Dave has bought a house on Wisteria Lane and is renting it to Mike at a low cost so he can stay there, join the band, and when the time comes, he's going to get it. Okay. Um, I don't think Cody's going to get Sammy, per se. Oh, I thought it was but Kev I... who was uh, Mike. No, 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 because because uh, I think Cody is... In, is uh, Cody, basically, he's putting together some friends yep. for an agenda that suits him, i.e., as Fraser rightly said, a little gang to keep tabs on the bloodline whilst yeah. he goes after Roman. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's shrewd from Cody. I'd love from it Cody. down the line if Cody does eventually turn heel, which I suspect might happen because I think no matter all the goodwill for Cody at the minute, we saw in AEW that melted away quite suddenly. Mm. There was a sudden drop off. Um, And I think that possibly Cody will, um, when he, if if, slash when he does eventually turn heel, that could be motivation for him saying, I never cared about them. I just want to, it was my own. I need it back up and you you fell for it. Yes. When he hits that crossroads on Sammy eventually. (sighs) We'll go, oh, you scumbag. 
a, a slight addition to this as well. In the car park, Sammy tells Kev that they're more than friends. They're brothers. Oh, a few. He oh. says he loves him, but Kev drives away. But he's clearly a bit conflicted. He's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's exactly how it went down. <laughs> <laughs> like he's in the room with I don't us. know why I did a sudden gear shift <laughs> down. I, was, I went down, I think. <laughs> no, I went up. I went up. It's okay. Um, Rhea Ripley and Dom, Dommy Dom, Dom Mysterio, beat Santos Escobar and Zelina Vega in a, mis a mixed tag match. Excuse me. Uh, Dom insults his father on the mic afterwards, but then Ray comes down to the ring and confronts him. Dom calls him a selfish, absentee father, but Ray said he made all kinds of sacrifices to give Dom a life of privilege. He names some, he's like, Gucci. Givenchy, <laughs> yeah. Versace, 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 yeah, yeah. Versace. <laughs> yeah, and and you wouldn't have had all, you wouldn't have been dripped out if it wasn't for for your, me, your dad. Yeah, Despite yeah, because I was an absent dad, but I bought your but, love but with look, stuff. Look, look WWE, you WWE are, twelve and I beat my kids. Yeah, <laughs> Xbox, so I could beat you. <laughs> Despite everything Dom has done, Ray still wants him to be by his side at the Hall of Fame, but maybe it's too late for that. He also says, if anyone else, a young upstart like you, had called me out in such a punk kid way, I wouldn't mind kicking your ass at WrestleMania. Yeah. The crowd go, yes! Mm. And, and then Ray goes, but not you. Uh, uh, uh. Like, Ray. Come on, Ray. I, I, I'm very surprised in the fact that if you told us all this time last year that Dom would be one of the highlights of SmackDown for people... No one would believe so you. good. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy how much he's uh, improved in the past year, and it's I think it has helped pairing him with Rhea because she's just legitimizes him so much. It really helps the because people really want to cheer Rhea. Yeah, so it helps <laughs> legitimize the hatred for Dom. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm really enjoying this, and I think having Ray. Your dad wouldn't want to beat your his son up. Like, I don't know about your, 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 your <laughs> like, I don't know about you guys, but when you're being a little, you know, toe rag, your dad's not going to be like, right, well, you know, you want to fight, I will beat you up. I'm going to 619 you right. on the grandest stage of them all. I'm so angry the way you've treated me, son. I'm going to hold you down to the canvas for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see what thing causes Ray to snap to actually properly get him to beat him. Well, we'll find out a little bit yeah. more on Raw. Mm. Raw Mysterio. <laughs> Your face. I looked to Joel because I thought he was about to say something like, let's cut that joke that out. Just, that yeah, that was terrible, Jack. Um, Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan, or as we call her on the podcast, or as Matthew started to call her, Sabu. Or I think Ross calls her Sabu because she's so wild. She is suicidal, homicidal, Ra genocidal, Ra death-defying Sabu. Raquel Van Damme and Sabu Morgan. <laughs> Beat Tegan Knox and Emma to qualify for the WrestleMania Showcase Tag Match. What do you make of the use? What do you use guys yes. make of the uh, these quite hastily added? I feel WrestleMania Tag Match. The build has been impeccable. It's it's incredible that they've just gone. Here's a match. Yeah, I don't like. They've. That I mean, they've they've kind of been very honest and just gone. We want to get you on WrestleMania, so here's a match. I don't, there's then there needs to be some stakes to it. I when I when I first saw the um, the the one match being set up, I thought, oh maybe it'll be like a few years ago where they'll have this match and then the winners will challenge for the women's tag titles the following night. Mm. Like give something. There's still time for them to add some. Yeah, top yeah. contenders for the women's and one of the. Men's I tag suspect titles. that might happen. They'll become number one contender surely. Yeah, yeah. Like, there has to be something. I think they will. I've got I've got faith that they will. Uh, Emma and Tegan Knox as a thrown together team. Uh, it's uh, it's a yeah. shame because I mean, not, there's not you know they they came back to such intrigue and fanfare, and I feel like there's a lot of pieces in Triple H's master plan that just are just sort of yeah f falling I, I, away. I yeah. guess you can't push everyone all the time. Maybe yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can. Um, I, I've got a name for them. Team. Welsh Australia. Welsh nice. Australia. Uh, I'd have called him Tegger. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Tegger. Shana Flair, that's a promo, <laughs> and doubts that Rhea Ripley can beat her at WrestleMania. Rhea and Dom interrupt, and Rhea admits that everyone fears her backstage. They turn away when she walks past in the locker room, apart from Charlotte. Rhea doesn't like that. Dom then gets in Charlotte's face and distracts her, allowing Rhea, uh, Ripley to hit a cheap, a cheap shot. This is harder than it looks. I get why uh, yeah, Matthew misspeaks Matthew, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, they have a pull apart brawl. There was a lot of pull apart brawls Lots, this week. There was tons. Mm. It's like that seems to be they've gone right this week. Where that's what we're doing. Yeah. That's that's the storyline. Uh, again, Dom and Rhea being the highlight of the, the show. They've, they've come in and they've, or one of the highlights of this storyline anyway. Um, I think it's the first segment for this story that has made it feel worthy of being on WrestleMania. 
Oh, you don't think this match was worthy of Fraser Paul really re- re- WrestleMania? Mm. No, no, it oh. doesn't. It, up until this point, it was just like, oh, she's won the Royal Rumble, so that's the match. Whereas now, it, that's the first time they've got physical properly. I think I wanted Rhea versus Bianca. Yeah. But I don't mind this as long as Rhea wins. That's, and it's also the worry that she won't. She must. She has she to. must. Does it feel worthy, you know, like of, of being in the main event position? But I guess that's something we could talk about. Because some people are saying that this will main event night yeah. one. I think Rhea mm. is over enough that she could main event night yes. one. Yes. I just think there's a lot of other candidates that it's not quite that clear cut. Yeah. Like Sammy and Kev versus the Usos. Yeah. Like other ones. That, as well. that <laughs> WrestleMania showcase tag match that mm. we've just been discussing. <laughs> that could be the main event. Either of them. Uh, Charlotte Flair needs to stop wearing stilettos if she knows she's going to have a fight. But she always kicks them off. She always ends up kicking them off. Well, it made me used to think that Vince had a foot fetish. I thought that for a bit as well. Yes. But he's not <laughs> I had to say now. I said in something I swore I had a good foot <laughs> fetish. Foot <laughs> fetish. Because I, have, I do the, the glottal T thing. Oh, that I do the, the northeastern yeah, yeah. foot fetish. <laughs> About it's getting to like three or four times a podcast now where we have to stop and start again because Matthew goes, It sounds like you swore there, pal. Yeah. It's usually when I say the word that means I did not remember that thing, I for because uh, I just shorten it and say there, like another, for God. I forgot. There's, one, there's yeah. one that I've had to change how I've said a few times that is another word for a boat. Uh, ship. Yep. But in my accent and the way I said it very fast. Stop it. Yeah. I was just told can't say that. Why are you saying that swear word? Nope. No, no, no. I remember my mate of mine had a, a weird thing with his voice, oh, and no. he this is would. Be um, and no, he said. <laughs> no, he said. No, he said that uh, when he'd sit down for breakfast with his wife, he would struggle to say. He would go to say, "Pass the cornflakes," but it came out as, "You stupid cow! You ah. ruined my life." Thank you. It's Britain's favourite light entertainer. Tom <laughs> I was born in the wrong decade. I'd have been doing, ba- I'd have been doing Barry Moore's gig. Not, the, oh, not, the, no, not no, that. No, 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 you're no. thinking of. Oh, I'm talking see. about striking lucky. Yeah. Um, he certainly did. We, l- <laughs> we learned that earlier today, LA Knight mocked Xavier Woods for playing 2K23. What? It was more that they were beating him up on 2K23. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. And because of that, Woods obviously won in a couple of minutes. In my opinion, a misstep. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> LA Knight's, he's great. I have turned a page on LA Knight. Same. This time last year, I was calling him the QT Marshall of NXT. Oh, oh, oh. Um, now, he is the oh, Kenny good. Omega of the WWE. Wow, the yeah, Kenny he's Omega. So good. <laughs> he's the rock. He's the rock. He is the rock. Um, the rock. Woods beat him in a couple of minutes clean. Then, backstage, Ray's there again. This was a very Mysterio heavy um, episode of SmackDown. Yeah. Ray's signing autographs. LA Knight offers to fight Dominic if Ray won't. Bit of a nonsense at the promo. He went, I'll turn up at WrestleMania and I'll call myself LA Mysterio. Yeah. And then I'll be a deadbeat dad as well. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> it feels like they've gone, we don't, we need to just hold off until there's something to do with him at WrestleMania, but yeah. we want to keep him on TV. Um, it, I can understand the booking of Woods going over because he's very much WWE 2K all over that sort of promotional mm. stuff so it's like oh well you're promoting the game it came out that day here you go or it came out the week before yeah. say. but like that makes sense but yeah it was a bit odd to have Ray Ellie Knight and Ray just be like oh you're deadbeat dad but like, it didn't really um, it didn't really matter like why not have had LA Knight um, is it because they wanted to get Woods out there because as you say he's promoting the game yeah, yeah I think that was to promote the game but mm. Ray then decks LA Knight with the right hand and LA Knight looks like a a, a sucker MC in this episode yeah. of Smackdown unfortunately um, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus have their number one contenders match for the IC title, but are both taken out by an interfering Imperium, or as Matthew insists on calling them, Imperium. Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. Matthew, why do you say <laughs> it like that? I think he tries to... Uh, maybe that's the German pronunciation he's trying to... Joel, know. is it the German tr- pronunciation? You might know. Well, I, I got an A star <laughs> at GCSE. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Jack, it, what, it how do you pronounce me? it? Because whenever Matthew talks about WXW, 16 karat you, gold, you that he goes, that, well, yeah. yeah, I have, but he always says that he's been to Alberhausen, and I go, Oberhausen. Oberhausen. And he ignores me. <laughs> it's <'cause> <laughs> Oberhausen, pal. Because like, you're you're small in that the sense. He's, he's just, I'm taller than him. Y- he's 5'10". I'm 5'10". When have you been to Germany? Uh, in year nine. When was he last in Germany? Like two years ago. Exactly. Maybe they've changed the language. They've changed then. the language since you learned. Um, I hope he's doing all right. I'd like yeah, to Matthew, say Matthew, <laughs> Matthew gave yeah. me permission to mock him. 
Tom did not give Matthew and Ross permission to mock him. And I was really on edge whenever they'd say something. I'd be like, oh, guys, uh, <laughs> I'm worried. I was saying to you, I'm worried about when Tubman gets back. I think he's just going to knock out Matthew. You think? <laughs> he's MMA trained and used to be a wrestler. Oh, he used to be a wrestler. I think a lot of that is really Matthew, he really, really is. Yeah. Hope he's doing well. Yeah, I hope he's doing well. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, whenever someone's not here, it just gives people carte blanche to just. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is this is why I try to attend as many family functions as possible. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Imperium interfere. Gunter stands in front of the two lads who've just hit each other with simultaneous finishes. I believe. Yeah. They're grabbing. They're clawing their way back to their feet, and Gunter goes, "Which one of you is gonna win?" <laughs> Not, it doesn't quite say that. Neither of them, because the rest of Imperium attack them from behind. The match is a no contest. Adam Pearce gets on the Tron and books a triple threat match for the title at WrestleMania. I think it's the result we all wanted and yeah. expected. Yeah. We, we knew this was going to happen. It could be a great, it could be a real show stealer of a match, I think. Let them just go, yeah. You were there. Not you. No. You were there. Sorry. We were sitting you there. Were, we were sitting there. We were together. Yeah. You were there for Gunter versus Sheamus, oh, and it looked amazing. Amazing, man. I bet live oh, that was oh. so good. Was it five? Well, Meltzer said it was five stars. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Who are we to d- doubt Dynamo Dave? We are not. No, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and finally, the main event is, as it has been on SmackDown a lot this year, it's an emotional confrontation. It's not a match <laughs> between Sami Zayn and Jey Uso. Jay talks about how he was the last Bloodline member to trust Sami, and he was right to be so hesitant. Sammy tells Jay that he can choose to leave the bloodline if he wants instead of taking Roman's abuse day after day. Sammy suggests that Jay isn't really mad at him. I like this bit. He's mad at himself because he wishes he could do what yeah. Sammy's done. Jay snaps and they brawl. Jimmy joins in to help J- Jimmy Johns in to help Jay. <laughs> Jimmy Johns. But then Kev arrives and helps Sammy. They hug it out and we cut to the backstage monitor <laughs> where Cody Rhodes is going... <laughs> and it's been memed it's yeah so it's good. so good it's so funny so good Cody very much going yes <laughs> <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> da 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 my master plan is working now <laughs> <laughs> since you've been away maybe it's because you've been away I've been hanging around yes I've been wondering why since you've been I'm feeling gone down. since you've, you've been, been gone, gone. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, how did my head can't take Oh, there's so many actually. Yeah, so many. Yeah. I was doing Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Got, ah. got, got rainbow. Yeah, I have. Um, ah. Cody's bit of his theme tune has grown exponentially every week. The whoa, whoa. and he does it, and it gets louder each week. So he good. pauses and goes like that. It's the biggest thing between AEW's production of Cody and WWE's is it was just the line in AEW's. Like his entrance, they never stopped and did the. the crowd, I loved Cody and AEW. Yeah, the crowd did the whoa chant, but in WWE, it's a big part of the entrance. Like it stops. Yeah. He does the pose. So, there's the big whoa, and then the fireworks go off. And in, in AEW, it was just he, he's walking down the ramp. And oh, yeah, like, but whoa. no, he had the center, central, the Cody Vader. Yeah, but it's the woe has become the thing in his entrance now, hasn't it? So WWE have leaned into that. Okay. Yeah, I'm more saying, than AEW. I don't mind. It's just noticeable difference in how they presented him. And that's a big okay. feature. I think, yeah, you're right. There was, I think it was presented well in both. Oh, um, yeah, you, okay. it was well in both, but it's just not seen the difference in mm. WWE's going, oh, that's a, a big moment of the crowd interaction. Whereas in Maybe AW, it shows WWE's interest in sound bites and moments and exactly, yeah, yes. short form content. Bingo. Like which our is why shorts. you focused in yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I liked uh, in this segment, Sammy being very hesitant to the hug. He thought he was going to hit was, him. It was like, no. And then it was the, that made it so much better. I just spat then. I'm worried it landed on in Thomas the, Hunt. In the cup. It didn't land in the cup. It didn't go far enough. If I get COVID next week. I'm, I'm negative. <laughs> you are a very, neg- you are a very <laughs> negative <Sorry>. person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pessimist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I thought it was a pretty pretty good episode yeah. of SmackDown. As we hurtle on down the road to WrestleMania. Yes. Uh, oh, we'll check in with AI Waitress the Musical. We'll read Act 1 and then we'll progress. Um, can I do the honors, please? Oh, go for please it, Jack. Please do. Uh, Waitress the Musical is a heartwarming and hilarious production. We've read this bit already. That tells the story of a group of employees and customers at a Waitrose supermarché. Set to a catchy score of upbeat tunes and heartfelt ballads, the show takes audiences on a journey through the trials and, trium- and triumphs of working and shopping at one of the UK's most beloved grocery chains. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the store you've waited for. <laughs> Walk through the door and there's bargains, they're galore. <laughs> Carry on. Act one. 
Uh, uh, just I associate that song with you anyway because I think we first met when you were dressed as PG PT Barnum as PCR yeah, from yeah. the Greatest Show, and I was part of the North pre-show. Yeah, oh yeah. I think that might have been when we met. Maybe that was probably wow. the first time we met. We met in the ring, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we, said, we said we're we'll working out in the ring. We'll yeah, see yeah. you in the ring. Um, the show opens with the employees of the waitress store bustling around, stocking shelves and preparing for the day ahead. We meet the affable store manager, Mr. James <laughs> Jenkins, and his team of dedicated staff members, including the quirky checkout assistant, Sarah, the hardworking deli counter clerk, Tony, and the charming... <laughs> And the charming, this was Joel's favorite bit before, and the charming fishmonger Maria. You think she's just going to be a good character? She's a great character. Yeah, she's charming. As they go about their work, they break out into a catchy song about the joys of customer service <laughs> and the satisfaction of helping others. Everything is awesome. Yeah. As the day progresses, we meet a variety of customers, each with their own unique quirks and needs. There's the elderly couple, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who come in every day for the daily newspaper and cup of coffee. Try and kill each other with hilarious <laughs> consequences. The frazzled mum, Karen. Oh, oh no. no. I want to speak to the manager. <laughs> want to speak to the manager of this store. Oh, Karen, he's not in today. <laughs> um, Come back anyway tomorrow. I hate Karen. <laughs> Who's trying to wrangle her? Who's trying to wrangle yeah. her three young children while doing her weekly shop? And the high-powered businessman Richard Tubman, who only shops at Waitrose because it's the only place where you can find decent sashimi. Uh, <laughs> is it truffle oil? Truffle, truffle oil. oil. Truffle, Thru oil. Thru truffle, <laughs> truffle, 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 truffle oil. Throughout the act, we see the employees and customers interact, forming friendships and developing a sense of community within the store. We also witness the challenge of working in a busy supermarket, dealing with difficult customers to the constant pressure to meet sales targets. Targets. These themes are explored through a series of upbeat musical numbers <laughs> and touching ballads, showcasing the talents of the show's cast and leaving audiences laughing, singing, and tapping their feet. Wow. And then it crashed when it just got interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Act 2, the stakes are raised as the store faces a crisis. A rogue delivery truck has crashed into the front <laughs> end. Causing, 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 causing what? what? Causing what? Karen's, Joel. Been, Karen's been bisected. <laughs> yeah. She's all... Her top half's in yeah. groceries. And a <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, Karen's been sliced in three, but the top half still wants to speak to the man. <laughs> <laughs> You can't keep a good character <laughs> down. You're going to have to find out too, Joel. Oh, my God. Right. Oh, what a joke. AW Rampage has got a lot to live up to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, no, no, it's no, we'll, come, we'll dip back to... No, I don't want to. This should be a returning theme. <laughs> Forever. Yes. <laughs> we, should get a, we should get the idea to do a weekly episodic TV show. Yeah. Catch up with it every week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, it, once Tubman's um, back, just do an AI Tubman in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Tubman is stood outside Tubman, a building. <laughs> Tubman's the leader of the Yakuza. <laughs> um, we knew it all along. AW Rampage, St. Patrick's Day Slam. And my caption is, Caca! Which is because. <laughs> I tried to, I was like, what noise does a Valkyrie make? Because Ty of yeah. Valkyrie. I, but I think they're women with wings, or are they. Birds? Valkyries are in. Women's, in, women's voices? Or? With, yeah. yeah. They're what is a Valkyrie? Like a. I'm, oh, thank you. Joel's thank on you, Joel. it. In God of War, mythical... it's a mythical warrior. Um, oh, that's a one of a host of female figures that... who guide souls of the dead. To the god Odin's hall of Valhalla. Okay. Nice. So, so Ty Valkyrie is guiding really, souls of the dead. Really good film, though, Valkyrie. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it Marvel? It's Let's... not. It's... Oh, sorry. I do apologize. Oh I'm really my sorry. I'm god. sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's about Tom Cruise trying to um, assassinate someone. Oh, I'm so sorry. There it was is, a very bad was, man. I thought it was going to be a Thor spin off. No, no. Oh, it's, it's Operation Valkyrie, but an actual war thing in World War II. I was really. I was really mean there. Judging. I'm so sorry. Well, you're a film jack with your experimental <laughs> cinema. It's just not from the 70s, so it's not for me. I mean, <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> no, no. And ride, the ride Bubsy the Bobcat, he'll fly you. <laughs> yeah. In the opening match, Powerhouse Hobbs beats Ray Phoenix. It, Matthew's right with this one. It's actually Phoenix. He says it correctly. Okay. Um, to retain the TNT title. He and QT Marshall beat up Alex Abrahantes afterwards as well. And then we get more of this. On Dynamite with yeah. QTV. Tom, you might have... I don't know how much you kept I've up I've been watching wrestling. QTV. I feel like this is a segment out of NXT. Yeah. It, but you it, should it, like this. But it feels like... It feels like the people of NXT would have gone, nah, this doesn't cut the mustard it's for us. It's not even good enough for us. I, I really know what they're trying to do and I appreciate the, the reach. I just find it... I find it insufferable, but maybe that's the point. It is, but... That's the point, yeah. I think yeah. sometimes there can be heat which... Is, Old heads in wrestling will go, no, that's the right type of heat because we don't like it. But I think 
there's a, a clear, dif- a crucial difference between being a good bad guy who you want to see lose and being a bad guy you don't want to see on your TV. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think QT at the moment, and it might not be his fault necessarily, for me is in the latter category. Is uh, the worry that he passes think, that on to Hobbs? I, I think I don't think Hobbs needs this. He doesn't yeah, really need no. much of a character. He's just a bad guy. Cool. Yeah. He's just cool. Uh, Taya Valkyrie Kaka wins her AEW debut squashing Eva Lawless. Jade Cargill, Layla Gray, and Mark Sterling come out to glare at her. I think Taya might be the one to do it. To be if Jade. Chris Statlander isn't available, then yes. Yeah, because uh, Statlander should have months ago. I think later on Dynamite we'll see something Jade says, which I think is a bad sign for her title reign. Yeah, I think Taya Valkyrie is. I, I think she'd be a great challenger, mm. and I think it'll be a great notch on Jay Cargill to beat her, yes. and then lose to Chris. You're Atlanta. a well-traveled man in all of the wrestling promotions. I tried to be. Have you ever met Taya Valkyrie? Not had the uh, pleasure. Okay. No, um, I've heard she's lovely. Fair enough. Uh, um, and, and I think she's very good, and I think she plays. Uh, she'll pl- she'll play this role in AEW excellently. But I don't think she should beat Jay Cargill. Okay. Ooh, I, I think I think that's a huge win for Cargill. Because she's so well Would respected, be, yeah. so well traveled, built her up so much that whoever beat her, it's a that's, huge. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. Is that if there is no challengers in AEW left right now uh, yeah. as a challenger for her, so it's like Ty Valkyrie coming in. It's I like, really, oh, that's. But you're only about three or four matches away from making somebody yeah. a credible challenger. I really thought Willow yeah, Nightingale true. was possibly the one, but now she's moved into a different part of the card. And yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, Matt Hardy, Ethan Page, and Isaiah Cassidy help Stokely Hathaway via the medium of a montage train for mm-hmm. his match next week against Hook. Um, it was not. It was. It was good. More silly for me. It needs was silly, more silliness. But it wasn't as silly as it could have been. Should have been more. Silly. Should have been extra silly if Stokely was in there. When I watched it, I got the impression that all of the guys involved had so many ideas and they had to cut a lot of it down. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. We enjoyed it though. I did it. I mean, I'm enjoying the build to that match, which we'll get to later. Yes, it's very silly, but yes. not silly enough, as you said. Do you remember when, do you remember when Britt Baker was doing a rehab segment with Tony Schiavone? Yes, that was that. that you, was, that's the level you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But like you say, there's a lot of creative people in there, probably all chucking in ideas. You know that famous phrase they say that a camel is a horse designed by a committee. <laughs> it, I thought you. Oh, were sorry, gonna, a giraffe is a horse designed by. Committee. I thought you. That were, was more like I thought it. you were going to go a camel. Too many camels spoil the. I think <laughs> mash two together. <laughs> no, I, think, I think the phrase is the giraffe was a horse designed yeah. by a committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the case that like they're all coming in with big ideas, but you just need more simple vision. Yeah, yeah, and you try and appease everybody, and then you you have that. Do you like giraffes? I know you're not a fan of horses. I don't know. I've never really had much interaction with a giraffe. Mm. My parents do. Do they? Yeah, they. <laughs> You've got a pet giraffe. No, I think they went a bit mad. What and... I like is this is a, this is a very unique situation because you went because because Fraser went. Do you like giraffes? And you went. No, I've already met them. My parents do, and then you looked really annoyed. Because <laughs> so I'm keen to know <laughs> what this giraffe has done. My parents think they're funny, and it runs in the family. And um, <laughs> uh, they once they've got this in joke, this running joke that's been going, I think since I was a, at least a teenager, right. maybe even younger, maybe like a young child. They've got this idea for a business called Giraffic Park, where it's... <laughs> oh, everyone loves it. Oh, it's a smash, oh, it's a smash <laughs> hit, is it? Oh, we all love Giraffic Park, where it's like Jurassic Park. It's a gir- but everything's a giraffe. <laughs> giraffe. <laughs> so giraffe themed. The kings of giraffes. What's up, mum and dad? You've done it again. That's good. <laughs> Can it. we open that in Roker? Well, just... I'm done. Giraffic Park. <laughs> <laughs> the question is Can not we whether John we. John Hammond introduced it. Yes, John Hammond. <laughs> Can do it. The question is not whether we could, but whether we, we should. should have by committee. <laughs> giraffic so, Park. I, I can, so is the point you're now ang- annoyed by the giraffes because it's gone on so long? Well, they think it's really funny, but it turns out it's gone down really well. So I think this is the first time we're hearing about giraffes. I've heard about park. Giraffic Park a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry, but we live in the Northeast. If a giraffe amusement park and zoo <laughs> opened up the road, I'd go. I'd go. Of course we go. You know, Absolutely. Hobby, especially if it's called Giraffic Park. You've got to get a bit bored after the first few giraffes. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Each one's got a different plaque next to it. I'm now realising how mad it must have been that you were giant giraffes, and I went, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> giraffes. We went to, went to Taronga Zoo, <laughs> and Ooh. there's giraffes at Taronga Zoo. We sat for ages watching them being fed. Were it really? Yeah, they're mm. just fascinating creatures. Fair they're enough. Giraffes. Then love maybe... A, love a giraffe. Maybe it would be a good idea then. Yeah. I don't know why I'm looking at the camera. I don't think they watch this far. If you're, if you're watching this and have the money to make giraffic mm. parks, Park happen, get in contact with Jack. My 
Dad has mentioned before something like in the in, in the first ten minutes of the podcast, yeah. but never anything from. If he mentions this though, then I'll be like, oh, he watches. Oh the my whole god, thing. he doesn't swim into the deep water. No, no, no. He dips his toe and then uh, goes. He's doing all right. He's done enough. Yeah. Um, Get Jerry Rafferty to open it. <laughs> um, god, where am I? Oh, Jurassic Park. Yep. No. Okay. Cool hand. Cool wait, hand. Wait, wait, the musical. Cool hand, Ange and Daddy Magic. Beat the Bollywood boys. Hey. Good to see them. Great to see that. Then, in a move that I'm sure infuriated Fraser, the two JAS members mockingly scissored afterwards. They did. They, they did. want to make the acclaimed a member of the Jericho Appreciation Society or members of. I think that. No. I think they've got a point. Your sports entertainers at heart. They are the sports entertainers. But they're, they're more than that. Okay. They're titans of industry. Okay. Right. <laughs> we don't need them in the JAS. I'm glad that I'm glad that you were an early fan and you got to organically yeah. enjoy their rise. Their rise and then subsequent. Because you liked them when they were just like a comedy act, just comedy on dark. Yeah, I'd tune into dark before the acclaimed. Really, the rest, you know, who cares about Jeff Jarrett and dark? Um, a couple of ba- sorry, did you have anything to? No, I, I'm just always worried because Matthew makes sure to meticulously like. Uh, I feel like I'm being What's a fart. The giraffe part? No, <laughs> I'm happy to talk about that some more. If no, you want. No, no. We see Don Callis greet Kanosuke to Keshta at the airport with flowers and a man with a drum. No, oh. he's really sucking up to him. That's yeah, the story yeah. here. Mm. But someone he's got a little bit of friction with, as we'll see, is Kenny Omega. It must be so annoying if you work at that airport and someone just. To- <laughs> oh, me and Bethany went to Poland last year, mm-hmm. and it's the first time we've ever been greeted off the plane oh, with a. Have a- a sign. Ah, oh, nice. It was the bloke, it was a taxi driver. King. Did it say King? Her name. No. Oh, Kings would have been fine. I've got a dox, my girlfriend. <laughs> Her name. <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> Her name, Giraffe. <laughs> oh, no. um, yeah. And then um, he was a nice man. He didn't really speak much English, but he did then give us a card for the return journey to the airport with his mate who did speak English. And we're oh, like, oh, what a nice man. What a nice chap. Oh. Not that we requested an English-speaking taxi driver. No, no, no. He just went, my mate will take you back. I can speak a small amount of Polish, but only swear words, so I won't bother. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was Richard Tubman. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, the guns, oh, they've mistaken Top Flight for valet staff at the hotel setting up a match next week on Dynamite, which we've, we've seen. We've now seen, yeah. <sighs> Those dastardly heels, eh? I hate them. Oh. But you'd, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not go away heat. No, they're... That's the difference between yeah, QTB and the is. guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, In the main event, Daniel Garcia beats Brody King. Big win after interference, though, from Chris Jericho, the bat. Great to see Daniel Garcia and Brody King get a spotlight, even if it is on Rampage. I think that's true. You know? Yes. They start a third show soon, AEW. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, too many shows. It's fucked too many too hours many. Too many. You know, the, that, the, this week I've in wrestling I'm, is just going to extend. I've realized that I'm more comfortable bursting into song around you two. I feel like if I did that in front of Matthew and Ross, they'd like slap me down. They, just, that. They, they wouldn't acknowledge it. No, you, they wouldn't, and it would crush me, yeah. Matthew would go, oh, that's a lovely voice, Ross. Oh, oh. Just ignore me. You'll find that, that this particular <laughs> lineup isn't too cool for school. Good. Good. Oh, too cool. Too cool for Jurassic Park? No. Never no. too cool for Jurassic Park. Um, We're the coolest lineup. That's this, why we can get involved with the singing. <laughs> this Waitrose week, the musical. Exactly. This week reminded me, actually, that uh, it feels like Daniel Garcia he had that whole storyline where he was about to leave the JAS, yeah, and then didn't, and it almost feels like his push has kind of stalled since then, or just not. It's just evaporated. I thought it was very weird the conclusion of that storyline where it was just sort of like he's like, yes, I'm a rest, nah, I'm a sports entertainer, and it was just a step but back. He was gonna Nothing side changed with Brian eventually, and then he didn't. There was no progression. No, but they they dip into it this week actually. They did. Good. That's not they're actually, you're right. They dip into yes. it this yeah. week, so I'm not against yes. it. But they that do was dip months into it. ago that they did that storyline. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, AEW tends to have this thing where they'll write something at the top of a page, and then there'll be two or three pages stuck together, and then they'll go, oh, we yeah, must, we is. must do that again. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it it's a it's a strange, mm-hmm. but. I get the, some of the criticism for it, and I've given some of it myself. But it's a strange way how they'll book stuff, then they'll then they'll let it then they'll let it seep, and then they'll book something else. Yeah, but they won't kind of reference it for a while, and then they'll just go. Remember when that happened? Yeah. I honestly, honestly, thinks, and this is a total guesswork, but I reckon that Tony's bad at delegating and just has too many ideas going on at once. Yeah, it feels like that anyway. But I don't yeah, know. Uh, Raw Monday Night Raw. 
the caption I've put is Solo, nya, which is how Roman like he he did it. They got him out <laughs> yeah. of the ring. Solo, nya. <laughs> Weird. It was like the noise that we do. I don't know if you guys are aware, but Kip Sabians, we see him as like a Dickensian villain. He poisons like, someone because he poisons people. Yeah. But like he's like a cobblestone like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not Jack the Ripper, but uh, yeah. similar. Um, yeah. And we do a noise dastardly where he's, where he's fleeing the scene on a horse and carriage, and he goes nya. That's what Roman did. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay, a DV lore of the don't. I have a You do idea. that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that seems like something that Matthew and Ross will not come for. Matthew with. and Ross aren't against it. They just, they just don't acknowledge it. No, they do quite enjoy my, <laughs> yeah, I think because I really commit to it. Would Matthew have got that this No, week? I would have had to explain it, but I wouldn't blame him in this instance. Right, fair it's quite vague. Appreciate it, though. Thank you. Yeah. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn open the show and put each other over like the best buds they are. I've always loved you. Loved you, yeah. the, you Kevin Owens especially was like, you are the best. You're yeah, the best. He's, he's lovely. Around. The Usos interrupt and call Sami a backstabber. He claims if that's the case, he's living Jey Uso's dream. Oh! I oh. wish you could do that to Roman, he said. Um, Kevin and Sami challenge them to a tag title match at Mania. It's what we've all been waiting for. Jay accepts and they have a big pull apart brawl, another one. And we see the rest of the bloodline pull another up in a one. car outside. Another one. And another one. Another one. Yes. Really like the opening. It was a nice mm. little reset of uh, how SmackDown ended. Mm -hmm. uh, I like now that in, on the road to WrestleMania, just they just they do away with the brand stuff. It's just yeah. like, we need these people yeah. on these shows at these times. Uh, to get this match over. So I like that this is how we started. Slightly livid because it dawned on me uh, as I was watching this that Sammy's scar music, as, and, and, and you know, for, for Preface, like I love hearing it again, mm -hmm. right? Really been enjoying WWE 2K23. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not in it. It's not in it. But Whoa. the update, right, so the update, everything else about Sammy's in it, make it current, but his music. Oh. And it's this old one and he's so got... Like the... Yeah, oh, dun, weird, like, dun, 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 oh sorry, that was generic it, yeah. like, music number twelve. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really hope there's going to be a patch because they've done it before where they've added stuff in with a patch. But yeah, it's not in from launch. I want to give top not top marks to the devs. Uh, Andrew had a lovely chat with the devs yeah. of Two K Twenty Three. You can listen to that on the podcast feed right now. Uh, but a, a lot of love to them because like how the game was all set to go, and then like with like days before the deadline, mm. Sami Zayn leaves the bloodline. Oh yeah, and, and they went right. Let's and they fixed it dead quick. And, wow. and, they, and they've been spot on with stuff like yeah. that. Sometimes you'll get these games and they'll be like months and months out of date. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, whereas this one feels as absolutely bang up to date as it could absolutely possibly be and that's no doubt down to Fair play. a lot of strong work from the 2k dev so yeah. much love you're, really enjoyed it as well you're really good as well though by plugging andrew's thing Andrew's that was yeah. seamless <laughs> you're, really, you're really good oh, stop you're it. a natural like john hammond i'm like i'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a I'm a john hammond you purchase on wish.com <laughs> um austin theory beats montez ford in a singles match he cuts a promo afterwards saying john cena will learn to believe in him at wrestlemania say none of you believe in me but john will john um will. It's a singles match again for Montez Ford, but he did lose um, quite clean, I believe, as well. It was quite was clean. It, clean? it was a nice showcase of having him in there. Yeah. And obviously, we saw him versus, or Austin Theory versus Angelo Dawkins last week. Also, a good match. I think having them separate is allowing them to test the waters of like, would they work? Mm. Would Dawkins work solo? Would Ford obviously work solo? We've seen him have a massive highlight in the Elimination Chamber. I like to put them in the here because it's like, this is the t two guys that are likely going to be the main event yeah. in, what, four years? Ooh. Four years? I think you're time? right, though, yeah. Like, you're right. top guys. Oh, top guys. Top guys, absolutely. Back on, Gallus Boys on top. Theory needs Might to tidy his beard up. Oh. I don't think it suits his persona he would to have, have such a scruffy beard. beard. He would yeah. have it, he would have, he's very vain, he would have it that trimmed down, mm -hmm. wouldn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. right. He's no, I was, I was about to honestly say Richard Tubman, who has, a bushy yet manic. His is both. His is big yeah. yet manicured. Though. Could he be trying to grow out and he's just at that stage where he's not quite able to let that it no, no, no. stay? <laughs> no, no, no. Tubman has testosterone No, not, not Tubman. No, oh, Austin Theory. Oh, sorry, right. Austin Theory. I thought we were doubting the no. manhood no, no. of Richard Tubman. He is Tubman. a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he is not manhood what? in the... Not, not his, not his, No. He doesn't have <laughs> testosterone. He has full practice run complete testosterone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, backstage, Roman Reigns speaks to Jay alone. He goes, guys... Get out. I want to speak to Jay. Do you like that they went, Jay, sit there. And then the ad break came on. And they're still there. And they yeah. come back and they go, right, we'll talk back. <laughs> glared at him for like five minutes. Just I just sit there for like two <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Just like, what do you want? Roman speaks to Jay alone. <laughs> the dinner's getting cold. Finally speaks to him and wonders why he thinks he can go missing for weeks and then come back and start accepting title challenges, making decisions. Jay restates his loyalty to the bloodline. And Roman says, and then, and then like he goes to leave and Roman grabs onto his hand and goes, I love you. And then it's all very 
uncomfortable. It's very me. uncomfortable, but they're doing it really, really well. Yeah. It's sort of like... Like Kurosawa. Like Kurosawa, who makes mad films. Okay, I don't make films, but if I did, they'd have a samurai. They'd have a samurai. Um, but I'm loving Some people this hate movie. that song. You know? oh, it's so good. I know. It's it was really a nice good. little touch oh, where Paul Heyman leans in and goes, did you get the answer that you wanted? And he's like, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Heyman, the amount of times Heyman says, my tribal chief, per week, is just <laughs> growing and growing so <laughs> I think he's about to stop saying it, so I think he's, yeah, he's, he's enjoying it as much as he can. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be saying it for much longer. Uh, a, a, a segment we mentioned in the news at the start of this show, Chelsea Green complains to Adam Pearce backstage that she made matching gear for herself and Carmella, but now Carmella's nowhere to be seen, and we actually don't know why. Um, she wants to team with Piper Niven instead. Wise, because she's really tough. Yeah, she's good. Um, she's but, Scottish. But Pearce says, hey, I made the decisions around here. But then... Later on, he does does make that decision. Yeah, but that was good. But also, like, wrestlers can make whatever me. teams they want. Surely, it's yeah. This is remit. Did they not have for a while? They're like, oh, you've got to submit a form to be a tag team. <laughs> they've, not, they've not submitted all the rel- relevant paperwork to be a tag. Because no. wasn't Billy Kay doing that? Wasn't she like approaching? Like, trying to oh, that was good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Though. She had like a photo. That was for Mania as well, wasn't it? Mania thirty. I'm gonna say five. Seven. Five was when she was teaming with Peyton Royce. And I the... thought, f- oh, well, maybe maybe seven then. When Mandy fell. Yeah, 37. Uh, first, first. Post, it was raining because it was slippy, slippy, slippy. Pandemic. Yes. Um, oh, Mustafa Ali says nothing is impossible, then gets squashed by Omos. Uh, MVP um, does a promo on Brock Lesnar afterwards. The true highlight for uh, Mustafa Ali's week was his music video on Twitter oh, where he sang yes. about retribution but to Hooper Stank's The Reason. <laughs> I, I'm finding Beautiful. Him, I enjoyed... He's good at this, shtick. I enjoyed serious babyface Mustafa yeah. Ali more than comedy Mustafa Ali. Are you okay? Remember you when know, he... You, I'm just saying... Remember when he was on the uh, cusp of like a WWE championship uh, push and like match? He, and got, he had a WWE he championship match. He got in, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And now <laughs> he is getting squashed by Omos. Who's had the bigger fall, him or Jinder Mahal? Probably Jinder, because he was Ali, champion. Ali, because Jinder's already done it. He's been there, done that. He's done that, He doesn't yeah. need it anymore. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. He's now on NXT, where he looks massive compared to everyone big else. Big dog, right? He's, he's the big dog. Um, no, he's not. Um, Logan Paul. Blanks. Oh, before the, oh, yeah. we move on, the Brock and Omos tail of the tape. I like this. Oh, it was good. Nice way to set it up. However, there was a, oh. bit, that, a bit that made Sleepy Tob laugh, okay. where they described Brock Lesnar's wingspan. And I just thought, be really funny if Brock Lesnar was a bird. It would be. The bit we, were, we were laughing at was when they did the Storm promo. Lesnar, no. No, with the child up against Omos. So there's a child... <laughs> In the video Looking package, up right. Looking almost to show how big he is. And, he, and it, the way it's edited <laughs> together, then someone puts their normal human hand next to Omos's gigantic hand. And it, it's meant to be like, look how big Omos's hand is. But it looks like it was the child's hand. So it just looks like the child's got a big <laughs> hand. Like, <laughs> like a massive, funny <laughs> adult <laughs> hand with a <laughs> wedding <laughs> ring on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was, it was a hairy hand. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Still made Omos's hand look massive. Oh, yeah. This monster of a child. One of the real, one of the shoot aspects of that um, video package is that in, when he was in the UFC, Brock Lesnar did have, I think you said, one of the like biggest one glove of the sizes. Because like, obviously all the fighters get measured for their MMA gloves before a fight. And Lesnar's hands were some of the biggest ever recorded in the UFC and still look tiny next to Omos's. Omos is a scarily big man. Yeah, big boy. I'm not against the match. It's a really a spectacle. If he can F5 them, mm. then yes, it's worth it. Brock we're all leading to the moment yeah. that Brock Lesnar F5s Omos. Is the ring even big enough? Is it wide enough? Do you think they'll do a ring break spot at WrestleMania? Nah, because then that's when they just trying to fix it. Oh. Yeah, true. It's yeah. Logi- that, a unless, unless you make it the main event of night two. Ah, yeah, you night good. two. Yeah. Oh. If you're feeling brave. Yeah. Um, Logan Paul blanks the Miz backstage. Miz has been hyping up last week that he's, I'm going to be the guest on Impulsive TV. Um, he blanks him and says, no, no, you're not the guest. And he heads to the ring. He talks about how the fans don't appreciate him. He's such a great... He calls himself a 360 entertainer. He's entertaining in all mediums. Um, But he has his microphone turned off by Seth Rollins in the production (laughs) truck. (laughs) Particularly obnoxious promo by Seth, but it worked. Yeah. Um, He comes down to the ring. (laughs) Logan (laughs) talks over his... He goes like, your outfit's stupid. (laughs) Seth's going... (laughs) <laughs> it was really I good. love that bit where he was walking to the ring like like you do when you stumble out of the pub at 11 <laughs> heading towards the kebab house it's like this way yeah. <laughs> I, I thought Rollins was particular I thought Logan's heel promo was the best one he's ever cut I think it was a really good it one it was good yeah um, 
Seth was amazing because he goes, what does this button do? <laughs> it's his own music. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then when he's when he's walking from the truck to the ring, he goes like, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they've just got really good chemistry together. It yeah, works. Yeah, they do. It works. Um, Seth comes to the ring and acts like he wants to talk, but he doesn't. It's a fake out. He attacks Logan instead. They brawl. Logan knocks him out again. Knocks him out. Nice. Not, not before the, the security fail to catch Seth Rollins, pretty they much. They catch his bottom half. The, yeah, they get his legs and then he tips and that's the, yeah. is the ground. But yeah, he knocks him out. Um, the camera didn't really catch Logan moving out the way of that dive. Yeah. So it looked like Seth just didn't like those two security men. Yes. I'm going to dive on you. Um, but no, Logan's knocked Seth out again, which I think does... There will be a moment, presumably, where Seth gets knocked out in the match, but like gets a foot on the ropes or something. Yeah. There'll be a moment of high drama because of this build-up, and I think that's oh, good. Yeah. Mm. The one lucky punch. Mm. Dominic Mysterio beats Johnny Gargano clean in a few minutes. Yeah, yikes. What's going on there, Triple Johnny? H no longer cares about no. NXT. <laughs> Gar well, Gargano heading into a big fa fight with Grayson Waller. Yeah. And it's just like, could you not have had anyone else do this match? Avria grab his leg, and then he gets rolled up or something. Yeah. Any, have any, Foots on the ropes. Yeah, have pushed anyone else off. do it? It didn't need to be Johnny, really. They've got a roster full of people. You could have put anyone else in this position. Why Even Dexter happen? Loomis, put him in and just have Gargano at ringside if you still wanted them yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit strange. Really weird. I mean, really weird. Legitimize Dom a wee bit more having a win over the fact that we're going. Why is Johnny Gargano losing? We're but clearly. We don't, but do, I don't need Dom to be we a don't dominant. Need wrestler. No, Dom exactly. yeah. legitimized. Yeah. He, he's great when he's cheating. He's a yeah. yeah. But there should have been some cheating involved. Yeah. Anyway, Dom uh, gets on the mic afterwards and implies that he's going to confront the rest of the Mysterio family on SmackDown. He's going to ask his mum permission. He mock yeah. mockingly said. Do you know what I think would be great? Mm. He says, "I'm going to ask my mum if I can fight Rey Mysterio." He goes on to SmackDown. No! Excuse me! No! Oh my yes! god, I want this so I want much! That as well. <laughs> he asks oh Ricky god. Guerrero! That would be incredible. Oh! oh would possibly he, be the, the thing. He, we, the wording was that I'm going to ask my mum, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! And she's not signed with AEW. Oh, it has to happen oh. now. You've cracked it, I think. Or if hey. not, then it, it's better than whatever they do. Yeah. You might know in a couple of hours' time. Oh my god. That would get him so much heat. And, would oh. be, and also. We're, Ray's, we're waiting for Ray to have a reason to want to have the match. And if Dom's like turning his back on his own mother, yeah, Vicky, mm -hmm. then Ray's going to be fuming. Yeah. Oh, that would be so good. It has to happen. Why have I written it this way? Edge cuts a spooky spookums promo. <laughs> yeah. it's really Ben Potter of me. Yeah, Ooh, spookums. spookums. And welcomes the idea of Finn Balor becoming the demon for their Hell in a Cell match. He's like... There's candles <laughs> and it's all a spooky Edge. You know, I've written here Holly from Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I, never watched, I never watched Red I, I know yeah. it's like a UK comedy classic. I did ah. a full show of Edge's face in the Power Rangers. Mm. Yeah. Zord. I saw yeah. somebody Zord with Blonde. the Super Mario 64 title sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Edge's head popping. It does up. look like he's just floating. I, I love that Edge is so creative with some of this spooky spookum stuff. Yes. But some of it does come across as a bit cringe and funny. And yeah. especially when Edge often ridicules the Judgment Day for being emos. But yeah. Edge, is a, Edge is a spooky boy. He too. was a vampire. He, he yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate the Judgment Day being all cringy and creepy as he lights six <laughs> candles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pine. It's a match that, even though I'm a big fan of both men in it, not particularly looking forward to just because of Edge's track record at Mania's recently. His matches go long. And apparently this match needed to was gonna happen at the Rumble. Yeah. Then they had the blow off in the mixed tag match, which Edge and Beth Phoenix won. Mm -hmm. And then Edge was like, but I'm still angry. And we need and this feud's gone on far too long. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It should have ended at Rumble, but then Edge was out filming Percy Jackson. Was that so, why? Yeah, why? the new Disney Plus series. <laughs> he was filming Percy Jackson. He was filming We're just yeah. hiding in the bushes. <laughs> Um, yeah, go on, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's just it's gone far too long this feud yeah yeah. I agree. It, needs to, it needs to end I'm assuming this will be the end I hope I Balor hope wins I hope Balor wins but I don't I'm not fully confident that he will no. he no. has to I, well I mean he has to you can't to. beat the demon can't have, but it, Judgment Day can't all go over yeah, at rest can. Can, can they then that would be that would be good actually if they did yeah be great so he'll win bad for priest because he's not even got a match he's not got a match no. yeah maybe he haven't beat up bad bunny <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Go. um Rhea ripley cuts a promo about how she's going to beat charlotte damage control i nearly said Cont damage Catal. yep interrupt and bailey wants to know if Rhea could use any advice Rhea turns her down so bailey goes well you're already cocky i don't like you Rhea challenges her to an impromptu match and wins it's a big win, I think, over Arrog Bailey. Arrogance of youth from Rhea there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ar arrogance of youth. And then she wins. Yeah. Justifying her arrogance there. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's I a, like this. It's a big win for Bailey. Yeah. Uh, sorry for Rhea, Rhea on the on the road trust me. But she but, she, but it was with some help from Becky, Trish, and Lita who turned up. Becky turned yeah. up a big back and popped. Oh yes, it to was. Create a gif. Fraser yeah. was telling me there's been rumours that Trish is going to turn heel. At I have heard that. Or maybe yeah. not at Mania, no, but at some point. Going into SummerSlam, I think the plan is for her to turn turn heel oh, based on the reports. Lid. Oh, my God. I've we got it. Have a spilled right. water. I'll leave it there, and I'm sure it works. We, had, that, we had a spilled water, actually, on a podcast not that long oh, ago. I thought I dropped it. Myself, Aidan, and Atkins were doing the Cultaholic yes, uh, you were. The, 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 the website and review podcast at the end of the month. And um, oh, sorry. Aidan got very excited and went... And then knocked over Atkins' pint of water, who <laughs> specifically was like, I want a pint glass because I'll drink it all. And it was all over me. Whoa. All over you. I was going to say, the podcast's been a bit temperamental recently, and I'm wondering if Aiden's pouring water. Thankfully, it, it, it went over me and nothing on the tech, because oh, I right. was very careful about I was like, this Because we've been like, why is this? They're, they're like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, for a few weeks now, we've been like, what's going wrong? What's and I'm just imagining Aiden going, bleh. <laughs> 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 That'll teach him, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Brawling Brutes do one of those Hollywood Mania vignettes. This wasn't my favorite of all of them. It was the scene from the 40-year-old virgin with the chest waxing. I just yep. don't think it was funny enough. <laughs> oh. I think what actually took me out of it was Drew. He just wasn't funny in it. Everyone else I thought was more entertaining. And it was right. a shame. Drew just felt very like... He was just saying the lines without any actual... I feel as though these, or at least some of them, are fans of the film in real life and have gone, let's do the bloody 40-year-old version. I feel like Seamus probably right. is, because he seemed into it. Drew was just like, you've got hair on your chest. Cool. That's, yep. It's fake hair. We can see fake. it's fake, yeah. He's, Not the nipple. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, Drew. Uh, I like, I think the best one so far has been the Seth and Becky, Joker and Batman. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. it was good. I, I don't think they've been as good as the ones from a few years ago. No, I would agree. A few years ago. Oh. <laughs> don't do that, Fraser. <laughs> you mean how many years ago? Sorry, you mean over a decade. How many years? A, co a couple. 18. Oh. No! 18 years ago. I was trying to work out, because I've watched every WrestleMania live since 21. So I'm like, how many have I watched in a row? And I was like, oh my God, I've watched 18 in a row. Wow. You must be live. so old. I'm old, wow. right? Oh, you can both shut up. <laughs> You can both. I'm closer to your age than Fraser. Ah, uh, no one's closer to my age. I think the, the, the sun is closer to my age. Oh, stop, <laughs> stop that now! You've got a son. Yes. <laughs> He's closer to your <laughs> age. Next to both in the bobcat. Yes. Um, Maxine Dupree has booked Otis a hand modeling gig, but Gable wants him at ringside for his match against Otis against Ricochet. Excuse me. And Otis chooses to go with Gable, but during the match is then taken away by Maxine. Ricochet wins. I loved. What did uh, Otis say to Chad Gable as he was leaving? Oh, it was. He went. I was watching this next to Fraser. He went. He told between the two, which ones are going to go with? And he goes, Coach. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> I like the bit where he eats the cucumber off his tummy. There's a bit where he's, <laughs> he's got a cucumber on his eyes and he goes, Whoa, and it lands on there. Stays there for quite a while. Like over a minute. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> and no one corpses I was like wow I thought that would get someone at least yeah. like, he must surely. have known that was there and thought he's yet. so good not yet yeah. it's going to be funnier if I wait a minute yeah. Yeah. I wonder if, um, he was, if he was sticking out his tummy just so it didn't slide off <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to keep it there um, they remain one of the best things on Raw yeah. Owen's favourite tag team as well I'm worried for him because they will probably break up I think at oh, WrestleMania right yeah. but maybe it will lead to Chad Gable getting a big push Maybe. 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 He's I good. Want, I want them to be friends forever. Maybe they he can asked, still be friends, he but asked, he realizes that Otis has a massive modeling career ahead of him. Yeah, him. true. Gable asked a, a, a crew member backstage. She's just stood there on her phone, and he go, I think he goes like, the way he phrased it was like, have you seen my main man? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's a great example of trusting the process, because you remember when Heavy Machinery split up, and like Otis okay. broke away with my, my, my Andy, mm -hmm. and then with like Otis and Chad Gable, like we were all a bit, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a bit cobbled, cobbled together. But now it's like actually they're brilliant. Never break since the they've turned now. face. Yes, yeah. actually as heels as well because Gable was doing his Kurt Angle thing. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Asuka and Bianca Belair team up to beat Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. But then after the bell, Asuka takes out Bianca. Mm. That'll be a really good match, surely. It's going to be good. Yeah. Does Asuka win? I think no. Yeah, I think it's going to be no, but I, I, I feel like Bianca's title reign will be a year at WrestleMania, so maybe it is the time to make her lose or freshen up her character a bit and make her a heel after. I like Bianca being undefeated in big Mania matches. She's already been Sasha and Becky. Yeah. I, I don't want that. Do you want a new undefeated yet. streak? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, they don't know how long she's going to want to do this. Yeah. Like, it's not like she's going to have an Undertaker length. No, but... She was already, I think, older than Taker at the start of the streak, possibly. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I think just keep her strong, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that would work. Mm. I'm up for it. Cody Rhodes confronts Roman Reigns on the bloodline in the ring. Roman tells Cody he ran away from the Stardust gimmick, started a promotion that he couldn't even get over in, and ran away from that too. Oh, oh Nelson. That must be AW reference. Oh. Bloody hell, Roman. Roman brings up the Rhodes family, and Cody tells him to stop. He says the bloodline will leave Roman once he's lost the titles. And then he notices throughout the promo that Solo Sokoa has been glaring at him. He says, just he makes like a legacy reference. Yeah. He says, just like me, when I was stood next to the champion, I thought I was ready, but you're not ready. And I'm like, yes, he is. He never loses. He's really good. He's really right? yeah. good. Strongly <laughs> really well protected. He's actually very well protected compared to when you were in the legacy. Yeah. <laughs> Roman and Heyman leave the ring. They just walk off because Cody's had a go at them. He's expecting a retort. And they kind of, I think in a mind game, he's sort of, they just go, oh. And well, no, yeah, Cody's like, it, it seems more like, it seems more like the, like, Roman was affected by Cody's words where he talked right. about when you lose the belts Jay's going to leave you mm. Jimmy's going to leave you Solo's going to leave you he'll become an advocate again yeah. and Heyman goes you see him mouth no my trouble <laughs> he says you'll be a, you'll be Roman with no reins <sighs> And a, and a chief without a tribe. Whoa. And Roman kind of, it looks like he's going to have a comeback. And then he just drops the mic and yeah. leaves. And it's the, one of the very few times that we see Roman, to quote the kids, shook. He's shook, bro. Shook. shook. Um, Solo wants to fight, but Roman goes, Solo, no. And <laughs> persuades him to leave. But it, again, it's not just showing that Solo is up for the fight, but that they maybe are ten, they're not listening to Roman as much as they used yeah. to. And mm-hmm. I, I'm excited for eventually when the do Reigns versus Solo because mm-hmm. that match is, is sitting there waiting if like like Solo's got such a such potential to be that next guy we pointed out that Solo and Cody had a bit of a skirmish before Roman called him back and Solo would have had more of a chance in the fight if he hadn't done a taunt before each move so he went yeah. and then got kicked and so then went, oh. you mock me every time I mock Pentagon for doing the exact same thing and it's Fraser hates Pentagon no I like him I think he it's just the, the mocking tone you do it in yeah, because every time he's a, he's got an advantage in a match, he does zero. Yeah, it's like, come on, mate, you could have won. All the best wrestlers do that. Flipping Roman Reigns does a Wurzel impression before he does a spear, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. Roar, bang! But then he hits the move. Not always. Okay. Not always. Pender does it. He does a little tug on about his own. A hundred times Pender a Pender does it a lot of times every match, yeah. Um, but I do really like Pentagon Jr. Yeah. One of my favorite little WCPW memories, right, is... Uh, I believe, I'm not saying I booked Penta or anything. Yes. Just that I was asked by one of the higher ups. You watch Lucha Underground, I was a big fan at the time. Like, yeah. Who's good? And I remember going Penta. Fast forward like a year, so mm. it wasn't straight after then. But I remember I'd said, Penta's Rig, I'm a huge fan of him. Not because of me, but I, that's you establishing my your love fondness of Penta. of Penta. Then we booked him and he came down the ramp in that big sports central, the one we did the rumble in. Yes. And he came down the ramp and there was one woman in the crowd in the front row at the side of the ramp and she was like oh my god and they both did it together to each oh, other he, did, he nice. interacted with her, and I was like I did that. I no. <laughs> that so, so Penta if you're watching you're welcome for the payday yeah. Yeah. <laughs> brother brother um, Jack um, drove you to the pay window <laughs> it is time for NXT and I've called it how can an unsanctioned match have a contract I don't know <laughs> so in the, in the past have they not been like it's not a contract it's a waiver a so waiver. we're not in trouble this but time, Johnny Gargano specifically went it's a contract for an unsanctioned sanctioned match. match we'll get to that anyway um, Pretty Deadly opened the show in tremendously flamboyant fashion so good and revealed that as hosts of Stand and, and Deliver, deliver. <laughs> they're wiping, they said like four times, they're wiping footage of last week from the archives. They had a bad week last week. They were put through a table by uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, who mm. interrupt. Pretty deadly want a match tonight. So Trick Williams ac- Trick Williams accepts on behalf of Hayes and Bron Breaker, not Hayes and himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a sneaky man. His how can they coexist? Tricky, some would say. How can you trust a man called Trick? Yeah. And how can they coexist? How can they coexist? They are opponents going into Stand and Deliver. Um, Carmelo is surprised by this, but they get attacked by Pretty Deadly straight away before he can ask why and beaten down until Bron runs out to make the save. He helps Carmelo to his feet and they have a tense moment. Mm. Pretty Deadly are the highlight of the entire save. Oh, so like, good. Watching it, you know, it, it, them doing the stand. And deliver. deliver. It's so good. He stands when he says <laughs> yeah. it as well, higher, yeah. <laughs> They're really, really tremendous. They should, they should be on the still be the tag team show or on the main roster. They should be on the main roster. They probably will be soon. Yeah. 
their feud with the New Day was made for like a multiple match series and then they got Gallus in instead. I'm like, I still yeah, they should have won the belts from yeah. the New Day back, mm. or back from the New Day. Now they pretend they've retconned it. So they go like, Gallus, you ruined our lives. You took those belts. I'm like, not from you though. Not them. Backstage, Trick justifies his decision to Carmelo Hayes saying he set up the match so that Hayes could scout Braun ahead of their title match. It makes sense. It's clever. Mm. Very clever. Good writing. Later on, Braun tells Hayes that he wants him at 100% for Stand and Deliver and he won't let Pretty Deadly or Trick Williams screw that up. Hayes goes, Trick Williams, he's my boy. What? Yeah. Braun goes, he's always got something up his sleeve. It's true. It's really it's insightful true. from meathead champion <laughs> Braun <Brick. laughs> Yeah, He's cleverer than he looks. Yeah, yeah. And he loves to fish. He does like his fish. Is that still a thing? I've not seen no, him fish in a while. No, not really. Carmelo Hayes even said recently, I don't want the fisherman Bron Breaker. I want the old <laughs> <laughs> They cut and Bron Breaker's got a fishing rod over his yeah. shoulder. Aww. You know when Austin's in the bar and then realizes he's not, he's thrown his life away and he throws the pool balls around and he storms out to beat up WCW. I need the old stone Bron Breaker's on a lake and he throws the fishing rod and starts <laughs> butterflying <laughs> back to shore. Um... We learn that Roxanne Perez's condition has improved, but we don't yet know when she'll be back. But it's worth noting there is still a vacant spot in that ladder match, which I feel like she might should take. be for her. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Stratton beats Indy Hartwell to qualify for the women's title match at Stand and Deliver. She later argues with Gigi Dolan backstage over who's going to win the belts. Um, Indy never wins a match anymore. Yeah, it's no. a shame because it felt like she was a big feature of NXT, and now she's sort of. She was with the way. Yeah. And since then, they've tried to frame her character as someone more important. She's like a locker room leader. Yeah. She never wins. You can't be a locker room leader if you're losing all the She's time. She's a loser. She is a loser. <laughs> Get back with the way. Like, why? The, the whole thing with Dexter Lumis and Johnny Gargano on the main roster makes no sense in the con if you don't have the NXT context with Indy Hartwell. She was... She was the bridge. She was already affiliated with Johnny, not... Yeah. And then Dex... Yeah, yeah. He's the son-in-law. He, yeah. He's the Tom so we John need, yeah, 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 we need Indy Hartwell with them on the main roster for it to make sense. And it's just a hodgepodge of mess. It's kicking off upstairs. It is. We've just heard that's, someone take a hell of a bum. That's a, someone who's a fan <laughs> of Dexter Lumis and Johnny Gargano coming down. Yes. The Creed Brothers go to the man's pub. And <laughs> it's a man's pub! <laughs> this is a man's pub. I, I hey, love this segment. Wolfie, not a bad draw. <laughs> not bad draw. Oh, we've got Fraser here to translate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they lose to Gallus at pool. But then, to my surprise, they beat them at darts. <laughs> Throw a few arrows, mate. Yeah, yeah. because darts is an American an American game. You've seen it in Ted Lasso, right? Where he wins. That's not a dartboard. It's an electronic toy that they're using. No, yeah. no, 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 no. And every time one of Gallus throws a dart, it bounces out. And they're like, yeah. oh. Oh, I can't even wait. It this should game. have been like an old pub dart yeah. board, like yeah. all the holes in it, like yeah. bits hanging off They're it. They're in such an American pub. They play eight ball pool. They should be playing red and yellow ball pool like they would yeah. here. I kept looking at all the things in the background, like the posters, to see if there was any Easter eggs. It's, there's not, unfortunately. Okay. It's but all just like meal deal. My, my favorite bit of this Sexy whole... Sexy Wendy <laughs> next week. <laughs> my favorite bit of this whole thing, and I paused it. a good it. time, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rewound it so many times. It was the bit where... Handshake. The handshake. Where they're like, ah, we will have a match with you at Stand and Deliver when you t try and take our titles. They do the Scottish accent phrase, that's weird. Uh, they they, they shake hands. Feature, like the featured shot of the handshake, like it zooms in on the, the handshake. Right. <laughs> and then, then Brutus puts his hand out to shake Wolfie and he goes right, I'll shake your hand too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they walk off camera laughing they didn't need to put that in because that's the start of a new take new when take. he does that and he he left left it in. you can see them corpse as like they walk off and I'll, like, shake I'll shake your hand, hand too <laughs> <laughs> why? So um, they agree to a tag title match it's done and deliver as a tiebreaker you beat us at pool we beat you at darts and have a wrestle yeah. um they they head outside, but who's there? It's Tony D and Stax. Hey, <laughs> I'm sitting here. They uh, they've just got out of the car. Yeah, um, just hanging they all about. back. They all head back in for more drinks. And later on in the show, it cuts back to this this segment, and we see they've gotten really battered. Way lads, 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 <laughs> or just had an orgy because they're all over the place. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Like One's mess. wearing Tony's hat and they're all like, yeah. oh, they're all physically exhausted. <laughs> they're like, I think they all, oh, that were great lads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this night in the pub humped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I right? <laughs> They've definitely had some sort of, oh, they all had oh, sex. Yes. They That's did. That's how we determine. Yep. At the end they go, all right, triple threat attack match. <laughs> As you say at the end of all sexual conquests. Yes. <laughs> all right, um, triple threat attack match. I, this this is, we've criticized the main roster, so I guess we have to say it as well in NXT. This feels very thrown together, I think. Yes, it does. Because it they're all deadly. all faces. They're all faces. 
even though they all feel like heels. All feel like heels. Apart from Creed, the Creeds, I feel like they feel more face out of, yeah. out of the three teams. Maybe, yeah. Tony but, D is all about what people, people sleeping with the fishes still. Tony D is a mob boss. He's a mob boss. He's a gangster. <laughs> Uh, a lovable one, though. Hey, 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 hey. I'm walking here. And yeah. then Gallus are Scottish, so that makes them the natural heels in, in America, right? So Matthew and Ross thought they were heels still in the Pretty Deadly feud, but I had to remind them that Pretty Deadly stood above them on the podium and went, we are up here, the English looking down on the Scots. So I was like, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe yes to <laughs> us. Going, to, you, to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew's got Scottish heritage, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wanted Scotland... He didn't, know who, he, he didn't know who he wanted to win in the Euros between Scotland and England. I was fuming with him. Like, I'm fuming Naturally, with him. Scotland should have won. Mm. Take it to a draw. I watched that with Fraser and Joel that yeah. match. And we went to Point Blank in Newcastle. Yeah. Mm. A rifle range. Not real. Air guns. Air guns. Or yeah. like, it's a computer. It's like Time Crisis, but big. Yeah. And, um, good fun. It was good fun. There were some there were some bigger boys next to us that I remember them. Remember them? <laughs> there were more laddie lads and I, yeah. and we'd only just met a lot. Like it was the that, first time I'd really hung out. It was with, the first in person. I met you before, but it was oh, early on. It was the first time I met you, Joel. And first time I met Ryan, first time I met Dan. Our team and bonding, Owen. our team chemistry wasn't there to compete with the bigger boys enough. Yeah. yeah. The bigger boys, one was dressed as Gareth Southgate. If it was now though. Oh, it was now. Cheeky yeah. lads on tour watching, watching you'd the all, football. You'd all awkwardly try not to make eye contact together. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> One of them came over and went like, oh, is he defending the country like? Because Fraser was like on the thing. Oh, I was like, good at We're that, all yeah. in the rifle range, sir. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to go. I nearly went, he's actually Scottish. He's and I thought, Scottish. no, because then that's inviting abuse. I would have turned around and he's a Sunderland fan. <laughs> just, that would have been it. Uh, they would have respected me more? No, 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 they, wouldn't no have... they wouldn't. They would, because Sunderland's a massive club. We are a massive, <laughs> we're a massive club. <laughs> On the river oh, where they used to build the, the boats. boats. Fraser's a Sunderland fan. I'm a Sunderland fan now. Sun yeah, yeah. Sunderland until I die. Good show. Great show. Joel's a Sunderland fan, sort of, because he came to Sunderland to watch I'm gonna, I'm going to come along next Sunderland. time when we get to the playoff finals. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, you, you're, you're a Liverpool fan anyway Tom Campbell loves the baggies and Steve Bruce oh the baggies yes um, in a change of scenery from that nimble forest sprite's usual scenery Lyra Valkyria yeah. uh, she's now in an abandoned tower block it's gone from nimble mythical forest it's all it was all very like Raven remember the game show Raven oh, Raven, Raven. Braith, you must face the way of the war Warjul Warjul but Lyra Valkyrie has gone from wearing feathers and like a cloak. Now she's like a Nike advert or like, have you seen the German film Lola Rent? Run, Lola, run. No. The, she's now like a... I've seen run, fat boy, run. No, it's not that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's now a postmodern... She's in like a sports post bar and like wrestling. leggings and she's running through an abandoned building. At one point, there's a window and she goes, yeah, and jumps through it in slow motion. It's good. Like, like Kip Sabian. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. More. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Joe, was that loud? <laughs> I went, ah. Um, she, yeah, she's ready. She, then she goes, I'm ready <laughs> for stand and deliver. Like, yeah. Yeah, you bloody look at me. I'm yeah. ready for a match in a minute. Mm. Yeah, she has one soon. She's got to run to NXT. Yeah, this is a strange. I did. You're right. It did look like a Nike advert. Right, okay. <laughs> really mm. did. You mentioned Raven. I once met uh, the guy who plays Raven in, in a Greg's. What? <laughs> Why is this your Hall of Fame? I don't know. Cause I'm going to fall over. I just, uh, he was in Greg's and I didn't actually say anything really to him. But <gasps> I was like, that's that's James McKenzie who plays Raven. I, I've, I never wanted to bring this up, but I learned last week, right? I told Bethany that you met Snoop Dogg. Uh, yeah. It's not really Snoop Dogg, was it? It was Snoop Dogg. It was Snoop Dogg. I'm worried that it wasn't Snoop Dogg. It was genuinely Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Bethany's met Snoop Dogg because she used to work in Tup Tup. Yep. And he was in there in the VIP bit. Right? Yeah, yeah. You met Snoop Dogg in Times it Square, was in York, Times Square, which New is York. where apparently a famous Snoop Dogg impersonator yes. hangs out. Yes. Now, <laughs> okay, carry on. Sorry, I'll let you. Um, so I'll let you defend your court case. The, the, there is a, there is a, an argument to be made that it might not be Snoop Dogg. However, I want as a ten year old or eleven, oh, and you were young and gullible. Be off, be off the belief that it was Snoop Dogg because the security that he had around him was far too massive okay, to be right. to be someone pretending to be Snoop Dogg. Okay. Uh, and we knew that there was a Snoop Dogg impersonator that was around Times Square. But the amount of the security that this... is like the JFK assassin. There's so many yeah, possibilities. back and to the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the amount of security made us Go think it was back to bed, actually, America. Yeah. <laughs> Your country is under control. So we're, we're off the, I'm off the belief it was him. 
purely on the basis of the security. Okay. It was I'll, massive. I'll take that piece of evidence back to Bethany yeah. and see what she's got a response. It'll be a re- the world's longest court case. Well, yeah, my gran was very persistent in getting us the photo with Snoop Dogg <laughs> to annoy gra- the security. Would your gran have been the most likely person to distinguish between Snoopy Dogg? No, and, okay. no, no, no. She she thought it well, she thought it was Snoopy the the cartoon character dog. <laughs> she was like, I don't see a man in a, a Snoopy outfit. And she did call him... Snoop Dogg! And he goes back playing the piano, riding a kennel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to say it was him on the security Okay, alone, so it's a crucial piece of evidence could, that I didn't it know. It could not be him, because there is a very <laughs> popular... Uh, Apparently there's just lookalikes all... There's like Marilyn Monroe and like... Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... It's an interesting addition to the evidence that I will take back. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy with the fact it might not be him. I'm okay. resigned to that fact. It was a de- over a decade ago. Cool, cool. Glad we got to the bottom of that, yeah. or did we? I, I don't know. Wes Lee comes to the ring to talk about the fatal five-way title defense at Stand. Stand yeah. deliver. Thank you. He says he has four spots available and is interrupted by Dragon Lee. But he's very respectful. They have a baby face, baby face encounter. Then they're both interrupted by JD McDonough, who tells them to watch a master at work as he beats Ilya Dragunov next. More, more on this segment. Yeah. This was just a lead into a match. I didn't like this to okay. bring in Dragon Lee. Fair enough. I think you could have made a bigger deal of it. He's if, playing a very basic, humble man. Very low key, like, hello, I'm Dragon Lee. I'll be in the match, please. I'd have had it just like, oh, we don't know who the fifth person is. Uh, and then it stands and deliver, you go, it's Dragon Lee. Whoa, yes. What this time. has been quite a modern phenomenon of ruining potential surprises ahead of time. I think they announced Cody in the Rumble before. Cody wanted yeah. to be an attraction, though. For the rumble, uh, he, we knew he was going to be. In the we knew, yeah, they shouldn't have advertised. I thought they'd do like a Shinsuke Nakamura with this, where they go, "He's going to be in the match, but don't show him on NXT Weekly TV until mm. until the event, and then you get the big pop for his entrance." NXT is a totally different beast to them what it was back in 2017, yeah, 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 so yeah. it might not have worked. Or 20 was it 2016? Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> okay, dad. <laughs> okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> there's a meme. There's a there's a. There used to be a player for Sal. They called also Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. <laughs> Um, and he's trying to pronounce it, this little boy on camera, going like, Shensu... Shensu... And just in the background, it's so heartbreaking, in the background you say, Shensuke Nakamura, yeah, we... Like, something. Uh, he goes, okay, okay, Dad. Oh. It's really sad. <laughs> anyway. The Scottish memes are on another level. Oh, I let your leg off there. <laughs> Bless Wesley. He, at the point where he said, I want to prove that I deserve to be your N... North American champion. Yeah. Like, he could have said that by going, N, X, T, North North American champion. champion. So I felt for him that in the heat of the moment, he went, I can't salvage this. They've given him a really difficult gimmick at the moment, which is charismatic man, which is a hard, it's quite a lot of pressure to live up to. He's got really cool shirts, though. (laughs) He's got cool shirts. Over there this time. Yeah, over there. I'm nervous that the only person that that made it out of uh, the podcast last week is now just spitting on the people (laughs) covered for the two with... It's what he thinks of us. Uh, (laughs) Miss Matthew and Ross. Spitting on us. Um... Backstage, we see NXT anonymous footage of Indy Hartwell throwing a tantrum after her loss before Zoe Stark mocks her. It's just QTV, isn't it? Just... Who is NXT anonymous? Scripts. Uh, <laughs> so, Scripts. I was so excited when Scripts wasn't because I was like, there's two mysteries. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we don't know this one yet. Who could it be? Is there any sort of logic behind who it could be right now? I don't well, think there is. There's no clues. There's no clues. Um, when... We saw them in the background of the fight. So, in the performance that's right. There was an NXT anonymous footage of Grayson Waller causing a fight in the PC. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also an official video that got released. And I was like, if we cross-reference the yeah, two yeah. and look for where the camera of NXT anonymous is, I think it was a woman. So that's that's what I've got so, so far. You think... With dark hair? Okay. Stephanie okay. McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, uh, who could, is there anyone in NXT that's an obvious choice for it? No. No. Because you would want that would be the rebrand of a character. The, so like, yeah, yeah. it'll yeah. never be revealed. You know we'll, that. We've also got the mystery of who injured Nikita Lyons in the car park. She just fell over. <laughs> I love that. She's just clumsy. Mm. <laughs> Whoops a daisy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Nikita whoops a daisy <laughs> It's a hot new gimmick. In the <laughs> locker room, oh, Fallon Henley confronts Kiana James about this mysterious Sebastian character who's been sending her flowers, texting her, saying things like, really good sex last night, like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what if Sebastian is anonymous? <sighs> oh. She threatens to tell BJ, Brooks Jensen, everything. But Kiana doubts that. She's like, you're not going to do that right before the biggest match of our careers now. Yeah, I hope Brooks Jensen doesn't watch NXT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Fallon says that doesn't matter because Brooks is like family to her. And when Kiana, when Fallon went, we saw evidence, me and Josh, of Sebastian, yeah. Kiana went, oh, 
She was shocked. Recently, like when there's been the whole Zach situation that turned out to be her brother, she was unfazed. She knew she was telling the truth. She had nothing to hide. This Sebastian character, she went, uh-oh. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be some other reveal like that, isn't it? Where she's like, it's my other brother. I know that, but why would he say lovely sex last week? He didn't quite say <laughs> it. Was, it was, yeah. It wasn't quite. Each to their own. <laughs> it was like... Her yoga it was instructor. Like I enjoyed last night and this morning or something like that. And it was like, oh, it could it's be a milkman. Mil yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah. Um, Thank you for the semi skim this morning. <laughs> that still sounds I, it's like It's a sex. lodger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to leave anything not an innuendo. It's hard not to. Yeah. I'm glad I got your gold top and <laughs> had sex last night. Yeah. There we go. Where were we? Um, oh. We're at the big body. Sex. No. JD. Yeah, JD, 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 JD and Lee, Dragon off have very JD patiently been waiting to start their match. They have their match, but it goes to no contest because Dragon Lee is involved on the outside. I think JD cheap shots him. It turns into a big old brawl, and then Wes dives onto all of them. Later, Wes reveals that he's put all three of them into the title match against him, but there's still one spot left. JD, by the way, didn't he even said, I don't want the title, and Wes has gone, you can have it. Yeah, you can get in. It's because you don't want it. Then Axiom arrives, who really does want it, and Wes yeah. goes, no, uh -uh. you've had your chance already. Instead, I'm having a battle royal next week, says Wes, which Axiom is like, fair enough, I'm going to win I'm it. I'm going to win it. Later on, in fact, I'll mention it now because it was later on, uh, three people, I believe, were like trying to intimidate Wes, saying, actually, we're going to win the battle royal. <laughs> it was Jinder... Dabakado and Donovan Dijer. Yes. Or just Dijer. Just a, a heads up, uh, NXT next week has is, is been taped, so there is spoilers around on the internet. So if you do want to keep this a surprise, be careful online. Mm -hmm. I know you, you love your I NXT wanna, week. Yeah, I don't, don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. So just be careful online because it is going about. Big Body Harvey comes out to Johnny Gargano's music and mocks the crowd. I thought he got his mannerisms down, Pat. It was good. Yeah, it was very good. good. It's the funniest thing he's done so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, he said, like Wesley, he's been he's been given a hard task, which is you've got to be funny, man. Just be funny. Be funny. It's hard. Be funny with our scripts that we give you. Not that one. The yeah. Actual scripts. <laughs> he says he'd pick himself over Johnny any day. Johnny hasn't even sold any Christmas records, which was an old joke from Big Body Harvey. An angry Gargano arrives and batters him, throws him over the guardrail before challenging Grayson Waller to a contracted, unsanctioned match at Stand and Deliver. <laughs> Grayson gets on the tron and says, "I will sign your contract, but not until next week." Because I don't want you in the building. You've got to stay out. The, you've got to stay away Bang. next week. <laughs> give the contract you specified to Vic Joseph, your best buddy. Then he'll give me the contract next week. I think next week Grayson's going to really harm Vic Joseph. Okay. Okay. I um, think I'm I'm excited for this match based on this segment. No. This is this is I think helps it. Although it's a bit daft that it's a contracted unsanctioned match. Gargano felt more intense than he did on Raw. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. They felt like it's two, like different, two different people. It was almost right. yeah. And also last week. Um, they Grayson and Johnny had a fight in Johnny's front garden. Yeah. And and he got curb stomped in front of his infant daughter or son, I can't remember, his yep. baby and baby, Candace, yeah. who Matthew pointed out she couldn't shout in horror, Candace couldn't, because it was the real baby and she didn't want to wake up. <laughs> <with the baby. laughs> yeah. She's like, Don't don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't stop fighting. <laughs> it was really awkward. Oh no! So Carl Fredericks okay? is now in NXT. <laughs> oh. yeah, he's known as Eddie Thorpe. But at first I was like, interesting vignette. It's yeah. all emphasizing his Native American heritage. Yeah. He's around a campfire as well. He's all yeah. mysterious and spooky. And then the shadows part and there's a set of DJ Dex. DJ ah. Dex. What is it with music in NXT right now? He plugs in, starts spinning some Sp spinning, tunes. Spinning tunes. Spinning know. tunes. Starts dropping some filthy whoop, yeah. whoop, whoop. And the pans up and in the stars is written... Eddie Thorpe. DJ Strongbow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When, very good pun there, because it rhymes as well. <laughs> when um, the reports yeah, of his name change. The more change. I think about it, the more I enjoy that. Chief <laughs> J. <Jay> Str <laughs> wow. That's now, good. Yeah, that was the, good. The name itself, Eddie Thorpe, there is some logic to it, because oh. uh, it comes from Jim Thorpe, who was the first Native American gold medalist. Okay. okay so that makes more so sense. So they haven't just kind of used the manatees to pick two random yeah, yeah, names. Yeah, Because, like, when it, the report came out that that was the name change they were going for, I think me and Adam was on the, were, were on the news, and we were like, it sounds like the guy that can get you dodgy DVDs in the pub. <laughs> oh, you know Eddie Thorpe? <laughs> ah, yes, I know That's Eddie. He can get, Eddie yeah. Thorpe, yeah. yeah. Turns out he's, Eddie. he's dropping yeah. banging beats. Yeah, he's, he's a spinning the, chins. The DJ bit did not need to. <laughs> him and, him, but yeah. I was like, oh, this is quite sensible for NXT. I just wish there was... Oh. Did, the DJ did Oro well. Mensa not also have a similar music? Um, he was just like sort of a cool, sexy man. <laughs> but likes music. He liked he liked partying. And music. because there was a He liked music. 
But and then, then Nikita Lyons also likes also music. Likes There's music. a lot of music. You think Shawn Michaels just really like is into music at the moment? He thinks the youth are into music, yeah. but he doesn't know it more. What music? He doesn't. Know, well, he doesn't know it. He just has a broad concept a of DJ music. Bus so replacement the service. Like, yes, the kids like music. Then he doesn't know any further. Let's give them every character involved. Yeah, I want every new gimmick to also be a DJ. Okay. So like you go like my name's Jim Rubbish. I'm the bin man of NXT, and he shows him in his bin truck. Yeah. Load of thing, and then he walks off to the side, and there's DJ Dex. I'm also <laughs> a wicked DJ. We're the spooky Scottish witches, but also <laughs> we are DJs. Um, Give everybody Dex. Yeah. It'd be hilarious. Uh, backstage, Ivy Nile, by the way, is sad about Tatum Paxley betraying her. She left the diamond mine. She says, Ivy, you're a, you care more about the diamond mine than me. And we were like, of course she does. She's been diamond mine since day one-ish. Day one-ish, yeah. Um, she has a qualifying match against Lyra Valkyria and obviously loses because Lyra's just run through a building. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. I don't know what yeah, else yeah. to say about it. Ivy's always been portrayed as a strong character and I found this quite shockingly an easy win. Yeah, I'm cool. sad because yeah. I really, I really thought Ivy Nile would be like an NXT Women's Champion by yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Oh, by now. Yeah, yeah. I thought at least be featured in the at the pay per view or yeah, premium yeah. live event. Mm. But instead, she's putting over Lyra, who they have had an interest in making look strong, mm -hmm. but they've given Ivy more of a reason to be a strong character. I think she's a yeah. hard lady. Yeah, especially if the Creeds are getting a spotlight on the show, you would think, oh, mm. have a moment for all of them. Diamond Mine, apart from Roddy, they've not really interacted for seen. a little while. Yeah. Um, backstage, Kiana James saves Fallon Henley from a beatdown at the hands of those damn Scottish witches. One of them is as vicious as the creature that hawks from the moon above, yeah. while the other is as cunning as those that dance below. They, you've missed some really good points. <laughs> yeah, I just like the bit at the end where one of them goes, "Where the hell was that?" Or not even the not even Scottish. <laughs> the, 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 um, What's the names? I've forgotten the name. Kiana James and uh, oh, Fallon Henley. Yeah, yeah. What, the, what the hell was that? Oh, right. It's like, you just got attacked. You were getting beaten down were by getting the witches. Down. Yeah. Evil. The witches. Wait, where'd that come from? They're so evil, the camera shook more than normal. Yes. Yeah. What are, did, they, what the, did they have the clangy poles? You know when um, someone gets beaten up backstage and they knock over some clangy Knock over poles. stuff. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. one needs to be there. Uh, backstage. Oh, we've already done that bit. It was the yep. Battle Royal bit. Elsewhere at Chase University. Oh, my Here we go. Days. This popped me. I feel honestly like we've missed something. We've missed a segment last week that they've just for, like, forgot to set for, yeah. this up. Chase you and the schism are having a big debate over which school is better. The schism is a school now. Well, they've got students. Yeah, they've, I mean, they're a cult, right? But they've got students in merch and cult members. But they're acting like they're a rival school. United by fate. Yeah. But what? Scientology's a church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, How, when did this happen? Have we not had skits before with Schism where there's been lots of people just around? I guess so, but not this many. Like a school. just sat around going, Chase, you suck. I don't know. I don't think they chanted. I think it just sort of... I loved it, though. Oh, the shot was beautiful. You had the red of Chase, you had the desolate dark. They were very... The schools were very respectful of each other as well. They sat very... respectful. Yeah, like... Not a blow was exchanged. Um, they have a big debate over which school is better. The schism are comfortably winning the debate. Yep. Um, but then Toyla Bite steps in for Chase U. Mm. And sorry, we... I'm tardy. Or, yeah, sorry, I was tardy. Apologies for my tardy. He wasn't. He was sat in the crowd. Yeah. He wasn't late. He was on time. He was there yeah. the whole time. <laughs> Do you mind if I step in? Step in, please. And his whole thing is that he's mystical and clever, and he gives a heartfelt speech about the goodness that Chase U brings and the nurturing environment that it creates. Not like the schism, no. which is destructive and evil. Chase U has, he says, like, revitalized Duke Hudson's career, made a career for Tia Hyle, yeah. and I can't, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> and, Andre Chase. We should have Tom, the actual <laughs> yeah, West Midlands yeah, yeah, yeah. man. And he yeah. gave Andre Chase something to do. Yeah, yeah, there you <laughs> go, yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> He's shredding water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, Andre goes, you're damn right. I always get shocked how southern he is. Yeah. I always forget. Um, you're damn right. He challenges the schism to a four and four match. at stay and in the labor. <laughs> but they refuse. That was really West Midlands. Yeah. But they refuse. They refuse. Duke Hudson goes, and he looks so heroic. He's so way. good, right? He's... He's like a superhero. He's, 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 got, half... he's got a very big upper body. Oh, he stood <laughs> halfway. Oh, Oh, we'll put the school on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I fancy him He's so much. <laughs> We'll put the school on the line. But the rest of Chase, you are not happy about. They're like, no. What? No, yeah. we've got it, Mike. The schism accept. Yeah. I, my entire well-being over WrestleMania weekend rests on this result. This match. <laughs> Genuinely, Chase, you, the thing that I look forward to when I watch NXT oh. is Chase, you. If 
Duke Hudson betrays them and joins. The there speaker. is speculation that will happen because Dull Hudson's answer was so Duke, Duke, dull. Duke Hudson, <laughs> sorry, delightful Hudson. Where did that come from? Uh, Duke Duke Hudson's response was so dull, and then all of a sudden he went, oh, "We'll put the school on the line." No, 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 like, no. It feels he like no. He can't do this. I'm just gonna join the schism. He... No, but he would be terrible in the schism. <laughs> <laughs> He needs he'll be fine. He'll shave his head and, I, and they'll drain his gonna, charisma like they did Zach Gibson. I think they'll and he'll lose. be fine. He'll fit in beautifully. I think they'll lose, but it will. It won't be his fault. Like he'll be the one to take the pin, and then you've got a redemption of him trying to win the school back. Oh, he's trying to wake up Mr. Chase, who's been zombified. He's like, yeah. no, Mr. Chase, Mr. Chase, wake let's, up. Let's give him a friends, not food. You know, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. go back into this rivalry and you bring Chase you back. Campaign from the inside. Oh, uh, if it leads to a long storyline, then I will accept it. But just in the moment, I need Chase you to win the match, and I need Duke to be the hero also, who saves the day. I like the fact that the the stakes are that the schism will win a school. Like, <laughs> they take control the, of Chase. The you. four people. <laughs> they were gonna do this with Kiana James. She was gonna win the the school in a in a. She had like the plans for the ground the school was built yeah. on, but they kind of just abandoned that story. So I think this is what they wanted to do. But they yeah. were like, we'll do it again, but with schism. It makes sense. Make it a big cult, and you can. I, I just can do worry. Loads of fun stuff. I just worry. Lectures with that. <laughs> Rip Fowler. And... I worry that if Chase you win. I'm going to be walking on air all WrestleMania weekend. You'll see me in the office. I'm going to, hello. <laughs> yes, we've had two hours sleep, but I'm delighted. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, I'm worried that, specifically like, because The Rock's daughter is in the schism, yeah. she's going to maybe get the pinfall. Oh. Surely you are like somebody in the Johnson family to bring down an entire faction. Uh, <laughs> like the Marvel Cinematic mm -hmm. or DC? DC. Yeah. DC. Yeah, the yeah, hierarchy yeah. of power in the DC universe is about to change. <laughs> He does the little laugh. It's so annoying. So yeah, so my character's the best. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole story. I want to appear in Shazam. To be fair, you do encounter a lot of people, as I'm sure you're aware, in the wrestling industry who's what, who really want their character to just be the best and never lose. Mm. Does the and Rock it's hard have when an a promotion eagle? books two of those people? You're like, one of you's got to lose. Has he got an ego, The Rock? Nah, not Dwayne. Mm. Not, he does strike me now as sort of guy getting in his contract that he can't lose a fight on screen. I think that The Rock has more of an ego now that he's not a wrestler. Y absolutely, it's weird, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Do you think when Dwayne Johnson was a kid at school and they were playing like cops and robbers, he'd be the kid that would go, ah, I missed those bullets. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. I missed them. He put over the hurricane, but he won't put over Shazam. He ha everyone has a limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like... In the main event, Bron Breaker and Kamala Hayes be pretty deadly. They have a stare down and Bron raises the belt. So standard building to the match sort of stuff. I am looking forward to the match. I think we're good. Mm. And I... I think that Carmella will win, but I don't actually know that because I think both of them could be called up and do well on the main roster. Yeah. yeah. I was just amazed in this match how springy Carmelo Hayes is. I'm, he can get some height off that. We've seen springy wrestlers. Yeah. But I can only think of Ricochet, who has such perfect form while being so springy. Yeah. He's so perfect. Really is. Oh. I like the bit, though, where Braun, mm. like... Scrum diddly umptious. <laughs> made <laughs> spring diddly ingy. <laughs> yes. Made Carmelo spring off the ropes and you threw him oh, so on a. Uh, um, he's like a rubber man. Pretty deadly, he is, yeah. Yeah. And I need a rubber man when I said. <laughs> Condoms. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that was NXT. AW Dynamite, which I've not written a caption for. Do you want for. to come up with one on the spot? No, I. No. Bucked off. Bucked off. Bucked off. Or better yet, he's got, a, he's got some wood with a nail through it. Who's this, the guy, the in the, who's this oh, guy in the main event? They haven't explained who he is. No. Oh, no? The we'll discourse has been infuriating. Oh, it's been fun to Luckily, watch, they had a really good match to really yeah. silence those haters. The show opens with Hangman Page and Brandon Cutler in the car park, traveling to hospital with the Young Bucks, who are... Is this how ambulances work? Individual ambulances? Individual. You look at two people No, never. Car? Well, you probably can, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, this, this, There's probably the health enough. service is so stretched. Do you use one for two people? Yeah, true. You're in the same yeah. place. We I mean, that. in America, I don't know what state their health yeah. service is in. But, mm -hmm. um, I imagine it cost them a pretty penny. Oh. You know, which we don't have to worry about. But American no. politics. Um, Trump, eh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> who apparently... The show opens with Paige and Cutler traveling to hospital with the Young Bucks who were apparently attacked before the show. I think it's implied by the Blackpool Combat Club. They might even reveal yeah. it later on. Kenny Omega is kept at the arena by Don Callis because he's got that big match later on. Yeah. Good for... 
Good guy, Dom. Yeah, be like, <laughs> you're paying focus. customer. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the fans are mm. paid to see this. Yeah. I don't normally get the outlet to, to mention this, but. Oh, the, no. What's with, this? With, with AEW, the commentary table's massive now. Oh, right. Yeah, it's like, big, right? They, they all look like they're leaning over uh, uh, over the counter ordering kebabs. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> do I detect a hint of envy there? Because I've seen Tom commentate a show stood on a PE bench. I have indeed. So you, would lo- you were dreaming of a table yeah. that I would love a table that big. I could stretch out. I remember. It was a rise that was It elite. was the deathmatch tournament. It was scary. Mm. I was worried about breathing in glass dust. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was a grim tournament. Really entertaining. Yeah. Entertaining, but... but yeah. Is that the one with the second ring? No. No, was that a different one? That was Fight Club Pro. Fight Club Pro. That's when they revealed... That was in the warehouse in Wolverhampton. Mm. And they revealed a whole second deathmatch ring. Yeah. No, this was in a tiny vegan cafe. <laughs> and it wasn't again afterwards. And <laughs> I don't think they've been invited back. No. It wasn't in the cafe room itself. It was in, like, their side room. Okay. And, yeah. I don't think they knew what kind of wrestling they were booking. <laughs> um... Darby Allen, Sting, and Orange Cassidy win a six-man tag against Yah! Kip Sabian, <laughs> that Dickensian villain, and the Butcher and the Blade. I enjoyed Orange Cassidy's face paint. Yeah. Like, because obviously the tradition is when you wrestle Sting, you have to put a face paint on. When um, you were with his partner, when yeah. you were with Sam Punk. So you have to partner mm-hmm. with him, yeah. And Orange Cassidy just putting OC on his face yes. was, with like Good. kiddie face paint. Like he'd almost like dipped his finger in some like black kid's face paint. Just got oh. Masterful yeah. character work. Music yes. Beautiful. And, uh, and I liked Sting later in the match doing the Orange Cassidy kicks and then a very a very soft pat on the yeah. chest. I thought that was fun. Sting, sorry, when wrestlers, we, we back in the day had booked some like, we, we had some shows where we had to just book a thrown together tag team for the show because we had this American over for this run of shows, but we had nothing for him on this show. Let's pair him with, like Moose and Slater, basically. Yeah. Liam Slater teaming with Moose because it used to be Moss and Slater, then it was Moose and Slater. Moose and Slater. Some of the most fun wrestlers have backstage when they're in a match like that where the pressure's off and they can just come up with creative bollocks yeah. for this random tag team. And that's clearly an idea they had where they were like, what would Orange Cassidy do? He'd just... Dab. just yeah. yeah, put Brilliant. Rossi on there. I, I thought it was a very fun match. Mm. It was a good showcase for Butcher and the Blade as well, who mm. haven't been, I don't want to say they haven't been used properly, but like getting there in there with Sting brings them up a bit. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yes. Um, the Guns retain the tag titles against Top Flight after interviewing from the Kingdom. Um, m- m- Mike Kanellis and Matt, Matt Taven. Matt Taven, that's the ones. <laughs> um, they wear purple. Yes, FTR arrive after the match and they want a title shot, but the guns say, no, you'll, wave, you'll be us. No. Absolutely not. No. no chance. I'm never saying yes to the match. FTR say, well, if we lose, we'll quit AEW forever. And the two teams shake hands and the guns spit at them and run away. It's good. Mm. I like this little interaction because it's, it's like, well, what if um, we never team again? No, you didn't hear me. I said never. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not that stupid. Um, uh, during this match, Excalibur got a text message didn't he, that said that Matt and Nick Jackson were actually oh. attacked by the Black Bull Combat Club. He did, right, he did. Ba, ba, ba. Oh. Naughty boys. Now... Yeah, big bullies. Bully Combat Club, am I right? Do you feel like FTR are actually leaving because their contracts are still up soon? I think this is just knowingly playing on the audience's knowledge of that. I feel like it's knowingly playing okay. on the knowledge. I feel like I think I think they're sticking around. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And they've silently signed to a contract, maybe like MJF possibly. Because mm. otherwise it's a bit of a risk to, to be like, yeah, we're going to put belts on them and they might be leaving. Yeah. I mean, Dax put out a message saying that he and Cash have sort of signed the deal on their futures. Yes. Right, so I think right. I think they're staying with A-Dub and they'll win the title. Imagine if they lose. They'll throw the cat among the pigeons. Uh-huh. Yeah. Backstage, we learn that Mark Sterling has ordered a cease and desist on Ty Valkyrie's use of the Jaded as her finisher. Brilliant. This is the bit that makes me think Ty Valkyrie will be the one to beat Jade Cargill. Jade says the open challenge is over, so there's no title shot for Ty. She's scared of her. She is. Terrified. But I still think this will lead to, they'll have a match of double or nothing. And I think that Jade will beat her. Oh, I think they'll have a match and, and Ty will beat her. Oh. <laughs> Unpredictable. That's what, That's what we want. That's what we want. What if I use, I use Jaded and disguise it as my own cooking? <laughs> oh, well. <done. laughs> Stokely Hathaway tries to announce his retirement to get out of facing hook. <laughs> this is great. And even uses a fake doctor's note, which is a napkin from a, I think a fast a, food a restaurant. a receipt from Wingstop. Oh, Wingstop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was written on it saying, I'm sick. I'm sick, yeah. <laughs> Who and, then, and then Bryce Remsburg getting in the spotlight. Oh, oh ripping, hates, oh, ripping the receipt. So much. But you needed to see what was on the receipt this time. So I no, get but, it. no, that was already shown. Oh, really? He just he just got it and he rips it up. Very sells the rip. Sells the bomb. rip. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hook eventually 
wins the no DQ match. They went into the crowd. They came back. There was all sorts of shenanigans. Um, but Hook wins, as he should have done. It was great. Beating up the Bobby Heenan manager kind of yeah. fair. Backstage, Matt Hardy hypes up Ethan Page saying, you can, av- you can avenge Stokely. Avenge him. That's, that's Matt Hardy's like in the room with us. <laughs> Lots of accents on this podcast so far. Accents and singing. Yeah. yeah. Waitrose the musical. It's what happens when Matthew and Ross aren't here. Yeah. So it's down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great match. Yeah, I liked how did what, it, did what it was meant to do. Almost got his first pinfall victory and then decided, ah, ah, I'm going for Could Red Room. His first first pin- pinfall victory. Wow. But he went for the submission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even know me. <laughs> Adam Cole cuts a promo, but is interrupted by Daniel Garcia, who says that while Cole was at home playing video games, he was in the ring beating the likes of Brian Danielson. He mentions a few others, but I thought Brian was the big one because I went, oh, bloody hell, he did. He did beat him. Cole says that if Garcia wants to challenge him next week, that's fine by him. But the Jericho Appreciation Society has made Garcia overconfident that it won't be a good night for him because you know it's all about the boom. And it's his first match back, so he's going to win. He also references the fact that he's a great wrestler. Sports entertainer, like he corrects yeah. himself. Yeah. So it's creeping back it's in. It's creeping back he in. He really I wants that. to be a wrestler. Yeah. But he's yep. still blinded by Jericho. And thanks, Adam Cole, for reading us quite a few times on Twitch. Yeah, what a guy. Yeah, good lad. He is the nicest guy. So nice. Jeez, he, is, he is the the wrestler I've met with the biggest disparity between their gimmick and how they actually come off in real life. Yeah. 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 Great man. Great man. John, Mo- <laughs> John Moxley beats Stu Grayson, quite predictably, I think, but it was a good match. Yeah, um, Grayson got a lot in. He did. He Moxley had strong. to really try to beat him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm sad that Grayson's not a regular member now still of the AW roster. Oh, he's, he was he's back. Been- oh, he got signed. Yeah, he got yeah, signed last week. Yeah. So th- this was him basically. Uh, I felt like it was a good performance from him being like, yeah, they shouldn't have let me go in the first place. Yeah. You know, they should have just let me go. Proving himself. Proving himself. Especially, although, yeah, he, he got a lot of offense in, but Moxley obviously won. Mm. It was a showcase of like, yeah, this guy's also good and he's back and he's signed and he's with the Dark Order and he's a, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. As much as he can be. Who's, who's this impression? Yeah, agreed. In the office. In the office. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. I don't know. It's Adam Pacitti. Is that Adam Pacitti? Do you know what I think? You'll be doing like a news video with him or something. You'll make a point and you'll go, yep, yeah, agreed. Uh, I, he does so business like big time. Mm. big time big time big time is when he's in a more silly mood silly Adam I, agreed is when he's like focused on the video yep. agreed. big time is when he's trying to make you laugh on video which Adam is guilty as sin of very good. he always awful makes for very good. he is awful for it he's he made, he, he made if, me laugh quite bad recently on one saying that I hate Lance Archer which I don't hate, <laughs> hate him did he um, finish your sentence by going like said, said he was an awful man it was as I was reading a lo- very long quote you hate him. <laughs> yeah. you, you, uh, want, you, you don't want to see him. You hate him, don't you? You hate Lance Archer. I love that we're talking about my friend Adam Bichette. <laughs> oh, no. Let's move on immediately. Uh, John Moxley, uh, li- even before the Blackpool Combat Club can think of beating Stu Grayson yeah. down, the Dark Order get in the ring and they're like, no. <laughs> and they walk off all like, we're the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Moxley's shoulder roll is different to the Vince one. I'm doing the Vince one. He's more like, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. How do we feel about the, the BCC being... Bad boy. I want them to be even more bad. I wanted yeah. to have seen them beat down the Bucks, actually. And I found that it was weird that only one of the Bucks was on camera. It made me think one of them might have come down with the vid or something, maybe. Because they just weren't there. Yeah. One they, yeah, of them they was being wheeled into the ambulance. The other one was nowhere to be seen. Just wanted a week off. It reminded me of that. It was in the midst of the lockdown era, so that, that's, I think, what happened, where they did the Woody and Buzz thing from Toy Story when he's got his arm or his leg. <laughs> oh, just, yeah. Because <laughs> <It's my laughs> <Woody. laughs> um, it was like a super kick. And one of them, you saw the full buck do yeah. it. And then the other one's bedazzled leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe one of them's injured or ill or something, but we don't, we don't know. Yeah. Well, um, an interesting line from from Don Callis when he was, because Kenny was feeling sad about, yeah. you know, not going to the hospital with the young bucks. And Don was like, hey, they'll be fi- hey they, those kids, they'll be fine in a few months. Which makes oh. us believe that they're probably done for a little bit. Oh, fair enough. They'll be fine in a few months. Ooh. What a flippant, what a crucial line to flippantly throw away. I, I thought mm. he was just sort of like being heelish Maybe. and just being like, oh, you know, like forget about them. They did drop those trio's belts. They did, yeah, they did, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> just made a noise while I was trying to find where <laughs> it was. On the, hmm. In a backstage interview, Ricky Starks calls out Juice Robinson for a match on Rampage and says, he says many things and I thought, there was a very pointed line in this that I... So he says, this is the craziest situation I've ever been involved in. I'm like, Ricky, I'm sure the oh. Hobbs thing was probably a bit crazy. Yeah. He just beat me down once. But he also says, he's annoyed that he had to come back from his vacation early just to tell Juice that he doesn't like him. 
I think that's real. <laughs> I think Tony's mm. called him in for Dynamite and he's gone, Grant, who am I wrestling? And he's gone, just a promo. And Ricky's gone, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It felt really real. Uh, yeah, he did feel, feel a bit more I real. I think it was real. The, the st- legit heat, you're worked. Staring you're the worked. Mm. Mark is Mark. Something's going to be reported in the news tomorrow. He, real heat between Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks and... has left to join Cody Rhodes. <laughs> I've, already, oh. I've already written the video in my mind. Wow. <laughs> it's time for another exciting edition of QTV. Oh, great. They laugh at Phoenix's lot. So they go, we've got some breaking news. Then they show last week's match. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it is very NXT in the lack of care given. You would love you, If this was an NXT, you would, would love it. it. Yeah, would love it. Yeah. Um, uh, they laugh at Phoenix's loss to Hobbs last week, and Aaron Solo takes credit for when Meltzer's Twitter got hacked. <laughs> um, also, there's the Australian woman. I still don't... I can't remember her name. I Googled it this time. But she dominates these segments. She's like, hello, we're here. <laughs> I did this last week, and Matthew acted like I'd said something so racist. He was Whoa, like, can't, you can't, you can't, can't be saying that. Can't be saying that part. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Matthew. <laughs> Should have been a colonial banter with the Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the Ashes. Come on, England. <laughs> I love cricket. Um, <laughs> the Ashes this summer, in fact. I'm really, I get, I get passionate about the Ashes. Like, and they were usually better than us, but this year... We might beat those bloody Aussies. Are you, that's so much passion in just a small condensed twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, <Come> on, <laughs> you were like you were like you were disassociated very yeah. briefly like you, from the podcast. Was, there's there's theme, someone else behind the your, theme, your eyes. There. The cricket Jack. The theme. <laughs> the theme tune that plays for Test Match Special. By the way, that's what I was doing there. The bim bim. Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It, I did get quite passionate for such a calm sport. It's very. It lasts <laughs> quite a few days. Five. Like, Th- there we go. Five days of five matches that last a potential. So, of are five you that days intense for five days? Longer. Of like yeah. Longer because it's a five match series of five day matches. Twenty five cumulative days. <laughs> Come on, did those feed in ancient times? There was a quitter that you never knew it was. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ah! <laughs> His name is Jojo Root. Oh Jojo my Root. God! Oh, he's my barber. Okay, um, we can't give no, that we can't mention mention no, no. Here. He's a monster. Come yes. on, England. <laughs> what, Jack Grealish? No, <laughs> no, the... um, no, no. Oh, yep. Thingy boy, green, yeah, green grass boy. Yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, Tony Storm beats Sky Blue. She and the rest of the Outcasts try to beat Sky Blue down and do the spray paint, yeah. um, but Willow Nightingale and Rio come out. And I read an online. I think a review, and maybe on Four One Mania's website, saying Riho looking hilarious, trying to look intimidating with her lead pipe. Lead pipe. Poor Riho. Man. It was an interesting. It was a yeah. strange image. I kind of hear where they're coming from. To have Tony Storm, <laughs> Soho, and Soraya, who were very like, who were very sort of stacked to Larry women, yeah. Larry women, and they go Rio with a pipe chasing up. Willow was there as well. Yeah, but Rio, it was a strange. She's too nice. She looks too nice. Yeah. yeah. She did push Yuka Sakazaki at Fighter Fest 2019. We it's a long know. time ago, though. <laughs> I'm never letting it go. <laughs> she had, it wasn't quite as intimidating as no I think mo- they wanted it to be. I don't think it was. I see what they're going for. Yeah. But it's a shame, though. That's not <laughs> her fault. Really. No, no. I think, I think Rio's great. But ah, oh, sorry. Misplaced positioning here. Yeah, I think so. And, as Tom would say, final more. Final more. Kenny Omega beats El Hijo del Vikingo in the main event. Vikingo or Vikingo? El Hijo del Vikingo. Vikingo yeah. is what they were saying on the broadcast. I think Excalibur's does his research I imagine yeah um, Tony Schiavone interviews Kenny afterwards after sorry after what I should highlight was a uh, very ambitious match lots of really big spots going on yeah there. like so many things that you're like how how is that possible for someone to do like he did like a inverted 450 Hurricane Rana in the corner what mm. like mad oh mad yeah um Tony Schiavone interviews Kenny afterwards but he is attacked by the Blackpool Combat Club Hangman Page returns like Steve Austin in an ambulance, which the hospital very kindly lent him. <laughs> yeah. I've, right, I've dropped off one of the books. Can I just... I need a lift back, mate. Just... <laughs> yeah. um, he almost accidentally hits Don Callis, who grabs his shoulder and he does the whole like... And then he- Kenny like comes to and sees Hangman stood over Don Callis and goes, no, no, no. Because Don Callis even goes, hey, hit me. Yeah, he Don take... yeah, Don's basically got Hangman's hand. And Hangman pushes him away, and Don takes his comedy, Sonic's losing all his ring style bomb. Uh, and that's when Kenny wakes up, and Don's like, oh, he did that. And that's where the, you know, I hope Kenny watches watches Dynamite Watch back to see really what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Jumba, Jumba, it was called Lilith Wars in Europe, but like Star Fox 64, 64. Maybe? Yeah. 
And you had your little pals, the rabbit, the frog. Slippy Toad, Peppy, Peppy Hare, Falco Lombardi, Falco. Fox McCloud. Those right. are just slang terms mm. for illegal substances. No, then, <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> so I used to... So when Callus fell over, by the way, sorry, I'm just that's the noise that I imagine I've got the wrong game. I thought that Slippy made a noise when he died. Yeah, he went, Aah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the noise I imagine <laughs> Callus makes when he falls over. Or Help me, Fox! Yeah. Slippy, you're rubbish! Slippy, you might be a, actually a trained pilot. What are you doing? Yeah, so, he, he's um, awful. <laughs> so or the noise that Toad makes when he hits a banana in Mario Kart. Ah! <laughs> Um, so is that is Don uh, Callis now Toad? Toad, yeah. Of my, <laughs> if one of my buddies died in Star Fox, I had to start the save again. Do it again. Mm. I couldn't complete the mission without all of them. You need all four ready for each level. I was a kid and I, I couldn't not have one of them there. Have the boys. Even if I know how to do a barrel roll, Peppy, stop telling me. Do a barrel roll. Yeah. Shall I? Um, shall I be the elephant in the room here? Oh no! What's happened? All right. Uh, Kenny Omega versus Vikingo. Excellent match. Yes. That, as you say, ambitious match. Yes. Oh, no. What was the point? Uh, this is where... Oh, Tom Campbell's on the dark side of the discourse. I didn't know no, this. No, 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 no. I Siding th with the Twitter trolls, are we, Tom uh, Campbell? <laughs> no, no, look, here's the thing. I've been called an AEW bootlicker and an AEW... We've all been called an AEW and a WWE yeah, The fact yeah. that I've been called both yes. says I'm probably doing it right. Yeah, I think uh, so. There's lots of stuff to love. I love the match. I would happily watch that match again oh, and again. Brilliant. I thought it was excellent. But... However, oh. what's the full story with Vikingo here? Was this just like... Now, before I judge them too harshly they, they did do a video more... package they did do a video package that went here's why you need to care yes. right but the thing is you've got a lot of people on that roster mm. that you could that could have had a match with kenny omega with some storyline elements already mm. uh -huh. inserted for example you've got the thing with mjf go and the three pillars who are all vying for a title shot you could have done Kenny Omega and Jungle Boy because there's Jungle Boy like I need to kind of ratchet up some some dubs mm. to get in there with MJF. You could have done something there. They would have had a great. It wouldn't have been as good, admittedly. So this was very much like, a, and, and I think AEW are quite guilty of doing this sometimes. Yeah, I know. Where yeah. they have just matches for the sake of matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that you, many occasions, they I've heard commentary go, well, if you don't know who they are, you'll know by the end of the night. I said, like, we've got so many people who we do know that we want to see. Mm. I, it's a very mm. interesting point, and not one that I wholly disagree with, actually. Really yeah, and, and, and again, it's not a disparage of the match. I thought the match was excellent. Yes. But I wanted to be the better obscure company rather than us, uh, you know, get, get called out for... No, I make that. There is, for uh, there God, is other people. Goblin Tony. I thought I'd just give that a mention. Goodness me. <laughs> there is other people a that definitely could have been in there. The chasing Amy there. <laughs> <laughs> Goblin Tony. I think they played the pyramid stage in Glastonbury, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they could have fit, fit anyone else in there. But yeah, good match. Mm. Um, but yes, I do partly agree with what you're saying. It's one of them where you have to overly tell people why you care about this match, when really there's so many other people that you could have put in there. And Tom joins the dark side. Mm. And that was This Week in Wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> yes, yeah, so a little rummage in the mail bag. Ah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Pause yeah. for response. Yeah. Yeah. Let me talk to you. The Rock. Thank you for that greeting there. Um, with WWE 2K23 coming out recently, the main thing I love is the freedom it gives you to basically book whatever type of match you'd like. It reminds me of when I was a kid and how I booked my action figures in crazy match types like 50-man Royal Rumble matches to Tag Team Elimination Chamber matches. Years later, though, both of those matches actually took place. My question is, was there ever a match type that you thought of as a kid that actually ended up becoming a real match? Thanks for all the laughs over the years. You always brighten up my day when I listen to the podcast. Much love. It's one of our producers here on the podcast. It's Noah Anderson. Anderson. And it's a very unique question from Noah Anderson. Yeah. I think as wrestling fans, we're all guilty of dreaming up unique stipulations. Yeah. Um, but has any ever come true? I'm trying to write my mind. I can vaguely remember. And if, and if we can't think of any that have come true, let's just say some of our silly ideas. Yeah, silly, silly ideas. I vaguely remember when I'd go around at my mates Michael's when we were very young. We, oh that's God. who I sort of got into wrestling with. And he had all the action figures and stuff and vaguely coming up with a reverse battle royal. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel it had, I, I, I want to say it had probably already been done in TNA at that point, but we weren't watching TNA. Fair enough. But we had all the wrestlers like out of the ring and we had the action figures fighting and it'd be the first one to get in the ring would then have a match. 
I like it. So the reverse battle royal. So Jeff Jarrett. I mean, I don't like the actual no, it's one a that terrible, really happened. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, but but um, our action figures were great for it. Who yeah. won? He had a Rey, Myst- Rey Mysterio from what was the outfit? Uh, it was the Flash outfit. So it would have been was it Flash? No, it was the uh, Daredevil outfit from WrestleMania 19 when he was in the the full. Purple, was it? Oh. I'm, I th- I'm, I think, I'm thinking of the right one. WrestleMania. I'm not being rude, sir. I'm just trying to find the... Ray Mysterio. Awesome. Matthew Dear. also sent in an answer to this question from... Be- not beyond the grave. From <laughs> out, in the, out, in the, out in the ether. <laughs> from his deathbed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tw- re- was he Daredevil at 21? Uh, that match against Matt Hardy. Yeah. Matthew... Oh, okay. So that sort of era. Yeah. Um, Matthew's one was, I had an idea of a ring... F- <laughs> Floating out in the sea, surrounded by man-eating sharks. I thought it'd be okay if a wrestler got eaten, then returned the next week vowing revenge. Oh, He's been a silly boy. Yeah. A silly boy. Like my cat, Mr. Butt. Imagine Chutney if, if a character a, did a wrestler got eaten and then came back the next week. Well, the big show fell off a building and then... Uh, he came back within came the hour. Yeah, yeah. Ray did as well. He got thrown off a building. No. They later revealed there was a lake. Little, mm. little building. But the show just carried on. With them, him and yeah. uh, I think Malachi Alistair Black. As Both well. of them went over the building. Any stipulation? Yeah, and a sim- similar thing with you. Like I used, to, my little brother used to collect the action figures, mm-hmm. so we would do like the TV shows and stuff. And uh, I had the wild idea for a battle royal ladder match. Ooh. So with entrance every two minutes, Ooh. entering the ladder match, of course, the Casino Royale. With, yes. with cheese now. Wow, yes. That's cool. Um, I didn't. I don't think I ever invented any that came true. So I'm just going to use this opportunity to bring back up my old idea of 24-7 title island, which is when... Um, I can't remember how long it was for. 24 hours. A week. <laughs> I think it was a week. I think, I've, I think what I've done is I've watched Battle Royale at some point and gone... <laughs> that. 24-7 title. Or maybe at the time it was the hardcore title and I was just thinking back to it. Yeah. And I thought, they get dropped on an island or an abandoned city. Different years, mm, different venues. Yeah. And then they've got a week. And we just follow along on the network 24-7. Who's That'd be gonna, fun. Brock Lesnar's got the belt. Get in the speedboat. Get our rocket launchers. It's really, going to be like the most amazing yeah. film we've ever wow. seen. Like Kurosawa. Like, I believe he was big on... He's, he's like the Michael Bay of his day, wasn't he? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for the question, Noah. Thank and you, Noah. Anderson. Anderson. Hello, lads. The Sammy Bloodline feud is great, isn't it? Yes. I think so, yes. yes. Long-term storytelling, great character work. Nobody's sure who to trust. Culminating with Sammy and Kev to reunite to tear down the current generation of Anuai. The story has now extended to Cody Rhodes, and while I think that there has been a slight step down in pace from where we were talking about Sammy aligning and eventually falling out with the bloodline, I think that both Cody and Roman are doing their part to keep interest in the story. I would agree with that as well. And there are still two Smackdowns and a Raw to really heighten the emotion. How do you feel about this feud so far? How do you all feel about this feud so far? I understand where Matthew's coming from when he says that referencing the business with lines like you couldn't get over or you were saddled with a bad gimmick can come off as a little overused or maybe corny. I hope I got that right. I don't want to misconstrue what you say. He's not here, so it's, mm-hmm. it's fine. Uh, is there anything that you would implement or change yourself to add another element to the story? Or do you think that if the company stays the course, all will be well? Cheers and have a good evening. James from Michigan. Thank um, you, James from Michigan. Thank you, James. Um, Motor City Machine Gun. Oh, yeah, it's Motor City. Uh, they do it because Michigan shaped like a hand. Motor thought, City. And they point oh, to where... City. Helicopter. That's what they do. They, yeah, they like the Motor City. Oh, is it actually? Yeah. Oh, very good. Um, what would we add to the story? More fireworks. Cody needs more. <laughs> um, I, I'm really enjoying how if it's this was driving how it's I'm in. Uh, yeah, straight absolutely. Away. Straight away. A fireworks I'm and I'm the fetus and I'm in. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I I'm, I like where they're going with the story. I like what they've done with the story so far. Um, I I can't say I would be able to book it any better, right? Like, I've got a. Ooh. I'm with Fraser though. I wouldn't touch it at this point. Too late. There is a fear of overegging the pudding. WWE have a history of doing this sometimes with things. Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon is perfectly fine as a storyline. Oh, oh wait, Vince McMahon runs over Bret yeah. with his car. Like yeah. you didn't need that. No. Don't overegg the pudding. It's it's one week to go. Let's have another solid promo off, and then let's see you all on Sunday. I would agree with that as well. But earlier in the story. Um, I wanted them to split the belts and Sammy goes for one and Cody goes for another and they both yeah. win. But 
But now I can't even be too mad that they didn't do that because I do enjoy the way they've gone with this tag team thing with Kevin Owens and Sami mm-hmm. Zayn. I think mm-hmm. that's been brilliant as well. And it leads to what I think will possibly steal the show, that tag team match. It could be a banger of a yeah, match. Yeah. A mm-hmm. humper. A humper. It could a hump, hump, as the kids say. Uh, so thank you to James from Michigan. Uh, namaste, lads. Tyler Bain. Mm. Long time listener. No, this person's actually from India. I read ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Tyler's just co-opting. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, namaste, lads. Long time listener. Second time writer here. And my first was almost two years ago. So a lot has changed since then. For one, I used to listen to the podcast weekly until my life turned upside down about nine months ago. And I've now been trying to catch up on everything since. I've now found the time to listen to the podcast much more often and have been slowly catching up on it. Right now, I'm at episode... Oh, man, don't bother with going through the whole episode. Going through episode. every single episode. I'm at episode 239, which, for context, was the first time the acclaimed went, scissor me, daddy ass. Yes! <laughs> My boys! It's like me with about the ashes. It's like, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Kenny Omega returned after an eight-month hiatus in the same dynamite. I'm approaching Brawl Out and can't wait to hear your thoughts on I get why you might want to go back and do them week to week to week, because you'll listen to one episode of the podcast, and then you oh, I'll just skip ahead and see where they are, and it's all like... Binky boo, my yeah. head is a bus. Ha yeah, ha, yeah, that right. is a joke that we like. That's true. I've got a podcast pitch for you, Tom. Okay. Cultaholic, classic cultaholic wrestling podcast in review. Oh, <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Jack wasn't on form in this. No. <laughs> I love it. Ah, the mailbag about the mailbag. Jack, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> then when you're on it, Tom, what yeah. am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> um, pitch it. Book yeah. it. Book it, Dano. Um... Oh, where was I up to there? Sorry. Now, an awkward transition to my question. Has there ever been a time in wrestling where somebody built up something so much that once you finally got around to watching it, you were left extremely underwhelmed? Is he suggesting that he'll be underwhelmed by the time we talk about All Out? (laughs) Brawl Out, possibly, yeah. yeah. It's a rubbish podcast. This can be an angle of match or wrestler, so don't hold back. I'm glad to be listening to your voices again, although I won't know if this question was brought up in the mailbag until he gets to this. Until he gets to Wow. Like well, I'm underwhelmed by your question months. based on the build-up. Anyway, hope to catch up Sid. soon. Sid from India. Thank you very much, Sid. Thank you, Sid. Um, when I was at school back in the 70s, um, I remember, it wasn't the 70s, but I remember getting back into I wrestling. <laughs> I remember getting back into wrestling in 1999 and a friend of mine who was already watching going, mate, you've got to watch Unforgiven 1998 because Undertaker and Kane have a match uh, and the ring's on fire. Uh, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Rubbish. It does sound it amazing. It looked like spectac- a visual spectacle. The Inferno match Not is great. one that, yeah. Not yeah. Great. That's a good answer. So that'd be mine. Have you got one? I'm really struggling. At this. I'm struggling as well, but I'll try and... I think maybe Total Deletion. Okay. Was that the first one? Total Deletion? Which one do you... Which one are Jeff you... versus Matt. The final deletion. The first one. Oh, yeah. The, oh. the one they... The, the, yeah. the first one in TNA like they it? did. I enjoyed it. But I by hated the t- it at the time. Yeah. And got pelters for it. <laughs> right. So I I think it was, it got built up so much where it was like, oh, this thing's going to happen. It's going to be crap. And then it came out and it happened. And then people were going, oh, this was actually really, really good. And then it got overhyped a little bit. Okay. Where then I was watching it thinking, oh my God, this is going to be incredible. And it wasn't quite. I find it, um, I find it fascinating how that, started the cinematic wrestling yeah. trope, which then became crucial during lockdown. It's weird how things Matt happen. Hardy is a great mind for, yeah, for yeah. that sort of thing. But I was, I was I was not impressed by it in the first time I watched it, just like, oh, this isn't as good as I'd hoped it would be. They didn't do as many things as it had been hyped up. But I had a, a good time watching it with someone who was a not a wrestling fan, we had some beers and watched that, and oh. it was a good time. Aye, because yeah. it was like, oh, you don't like wrestling? Watch this. And they thought it was crazy. Okay. I enjoyed it more then, but it was not what I had it hyped up to be. So Fair much enough. of wrestling is the people that you watch it with sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I would say so. I'm still I'm still struggling to think of one of my own. Do you know what? And this is this is really this is controversial. I'm not gonna get. I'm not this isn't gonna be a popular opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh I once did in the early days of Cultaholic, I wrote an article for the website ranking all of the Royal Rumble matches. Yeah. And I was underwhelmed by the 1992 Royal Rumble. Oh, really? Not by Bobby Heenan's commentary, which is why everyone mentions and it's brilliant. Just the pacing of the match and everything. I remember thinking, well, I've only just recently watched the 1990 Royal Rumble, and that was amazing. I love the 1991. That's the one with Hogan and Warriors stare down. There's a bit where I think like maybe... Piper and Roberts or so, two of them are back to back fighting off hordes of heels. I was like, this is an amazing match. And then watch the 92 one and it's, because of the the story the Flair tells throughout, it's it's naturally just a bit slower. And I remember thinking, 
that's a bit overrated. And, I, yeah. and, I, and I've never publicly admitted that. <laughs> no. But now I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one, one other wrestler I'll actually add to this, and I've changed my mind since, mm. but LA Knight. Yeah. yeah. Because when, you know, about a year and a half ago, I was I was sitting upstairs. I'd have you and you and Ross come back after recording the podcast. I wasn't on board either at the time. Right, but it was LA Knight was a big deal in NXT and calling him the Rock, calling him the next, you know, the next Rock, or just calling him the Rock and yeah, not even the yeah. next. It was very overhyped. And then when I would sit down and watch NXT, and I'm like, oh, he's just a bit like he's yeah. imitating them and it's boring and he's doing the same thing and his in ring style wasn't that entertaining for me on NXT. Oh. On the main roster though, he is he is on another level. Oh yes. And he, he has fully turned me around on it. But the, the first point, I was very uh, sort of underwhelmed by L.A. Knight. That's I fair. tweeted that his name was L.A. and then it rhymed with Knight. And, uh, Kite? Yeah, I'm going to... Similar. Yeah. Flight. You know, Flight. I'm going to retweet it one day and be Bright. like, look how silly I was. That's crazy, you naughty man. No. Um, so that was Sid from India's question, and those were the three questions on the mailbag. We'll be back in a second with Reese's Pieces, but if you would like to um, submit a question to the mailbag of your very own, you can find us at... Mailbag. Mailbag. It's at harder than it looks. This. Mailbag at cultaholic.com. Oh, sh. Ah. Hello, cultaholic. Wishing you all. A great day. As we, I just made sure, I just made sure the name was on the end. Yeah, yeah. Wishing you all a great day. As we all know, a few weeks ago, the soon-to-be Hall of Famer Kaiji Muto had perhaps the most perfect retirement bout in wrestling history, ending his career against his very first opponent, Masahiro Chono. With that in mind, here's a list of wrestlers, and you all have to choose who would be in their retirement match. Nice. If it were up to me, I'd have Hook retire everyone. <laughs> Sting later on this year, Hook. Samoa Joe in a few years, Hook's the guy. At some point, Brian Danielson, Hook out wrestles that wannabe. <laughs> and that is from Ibrahim Shanawas. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Um, right, fastest thought first. Um, Fizzer, then Tom, then myself. Um, there we go. That's the Matthew for the... Um, okay, the first retirement match for Sting. Darby Allen. Hook. Don't do this. <laughs> I can sense... I'm just getting... The mischievousness. Just, yeah, could sense a bit. Um, I was going to say Darby Allen too. I think that feels yeah, quite right. I'll go for then... Um, yeah, it has to be Darby, doesn't it? Just just for the sake of something different, yeah. I'll go for Jeff Jarrett. Nice. Um, yeah. John Cena. Randy Orton. Happy Corbin. Kurt... Angle. What's yeah. happened there, guys? <laughs> I mean, Kurt Angle Randy makes, works. But Kurt Angle's retired, so I'm going for... What? <laughs> he retired everybody, the old Rappi um, Corbin. Yeah, he did. Um, Randy Orton. Is a John Cena. A John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. Happy Corbin. No. Uh, <laughs> Matt Riddle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Send him away. I'll finish up RK, bro. And Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Phrasing you, the yeah. arrogance of you. Actually, that's yeah. a much I was better. I was going to change my answer. that. He goes, yeah. It's probably going to change my answer, too. Have that first, actually, yeah. Jack, but it's fine. That's a much better answer. Y2J, Chris Jericho. Oh, Big Show. Yeah, there's quite a lot. Big Show works. There's quite a lot you can pick for Yeah, Jericho's got a lot of opponents. Oh, MJF. Mmm. The new shenanigan meister takes out the old shenanigan meister. Yeah, I think that I don't know if I can think of better than that. Other than, I guess maybe, maybe Daniel Garcia in his story, but it's too early yeah. for Jericho to retire. But um, Sammy Guevara. Yeah. Um, CM Punk. The young bucks in a backstage brawl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brian Danielson. Stop being nasty to CM I know, Punk. Sorry, I Brian do like, I do like Punk. Yeah. MJF again. Mm. That yeah, the the storyline between them highlighted the similarities and everything. Um, I'll go for in a legitimate fight match Eddie Kingston because the hatred is there, and I love their first oh. match as well. It was really good, but I like the Danielson idea as well. Yeah. Ring of Honor guy. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go Samoa Joe. Good. Yeah. Stop it! <laughs> did you see that? He gave me permission to get out of there. I did, I did, I did, oh, good. I did that one on purpose. It? No, you did <laughs> not. Okay, yes. fair enough then. Brian Danielson. Okada. Mm, great job. Ooh. I mean, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I'll allow it. It's easy to wind up. <laughs> I'll it's not easy to wind me up. Why is his name Willie Uta? Mmm. <laughs> Okay. No, it works, yeah. works, works, works. Yeah. Throwing that out. Though. I'll go for. 
Kota Ibushi. Mm-hmm. I guess. Kind of plucked one out of. Um, Brock Lesnar. Matt Riddle. Omos. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this year. <laughs> Omos. Um, oh. Who could. My stomach rumbles a lot there. Mm. Who could. Just the thought of Brock Lesnar. <laughs> mm. um, Brock Lesnar. Who on earth could realistically do that? Roman. But we've yeah, had a million Roman had Brock too matches. Too many of those matches. Yeah, we have. Um, God. Oh no, guys. Oh no. I can't see him retiring at all. Yeah. No, we're just leaving. Can't just stop. Drew. Uh? Triple H. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> uh, Bobby Lashley. Braun Breaker. Great. Yeah, great shout. Oh, that's a great shout, mm. that is. Um, <laughs> Omos. I, I want um, the career killer. <laughs> I'll go for um, oh damn! I'll go for Cedric Alexander. Dan? No, <laughs> Cedric Alexander. But then can I change my last answer for Lesnar to Shelton Benjamin? Yeah, because it's May. Because they're best pals. Um, and then lastly, Cedric. Yep. Yeah. Um, Paul White, aka the Big Show. Oh. Hook. Not not the bit, but genuinely, <gasps> genuinely. genuinely. Imagine him That's being able to take the Big Show. Very good show. I'm going to say Hook as well. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Love that. Thank you. Love Love that. Some grass um, <laughs> big show, I'll say Powerhouse Hobbs. That's a good shout too. Yeah. I prefer the Hook one though, but just for flavor, Both, variety. Both, yeah, yeah. Um, Samoa Joe. Jungle Boy. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Uh, Wardlow. Yes, also works. CM Punk, because I want him back. Yes, I want him back. Yeah. Uh, but I've had him retire. They both pin each other. John Moxley. Seth Rollins. Yes, it has to be. Roman Reigns. Yes, it has to be. <laughs> this is an easy one for Triple you. Threat, Roman Reigns <laughs> and Seth Rollins. Um, guys, I've got to confess. Since the Samoa Joe answer and the CM Punk thing yep. a few moments ago, mm-hmm. I've had deja vu all the way until you said the Triple Threat thing. Oh. I knew you were going to say that. Mm-hmm. I hate deja vu. It's happened before, right? <laughs> Deja vu all over again. And then it's quite an existential in, podcast. I, thought, I thought I then went. I thought I then accidentally read Ibrahim's name because he sent it in. I thought I went and Hook. who will retire, yeah. Ibrahim? Hook. <laughs> and, but I think I've broken, I, don't, I don't think that's what then happened. So I've broken the spell. You like Apollo Cruz? Thank you. You're seeing the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. I've won the house cup. <laughs> thank you, Ibrahim, <laughs> for your question. And uh, thank you to everybody who sent in their yeah. mailbags uh, questions this week. Unfortunately, we couldn't fit all of them in. I, was, I don't know if Ross does it. It's such a heartless task. It's a tough job, right? them all in. Um, but thank you, everyone, who submitted questions and Reese's Pieces. If you would like to, for next week, then send them to Cultaholic. Mailbag at Cultaholic.com. Mailbag at Cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholic's The Question and now a big thank you to our producers. We heard from him earlier, Noah Anderson. Anderson. And Reno2200. Two, two, zero, zero. Zero. Two, two, zero, zero. Zero. Uh, the big question this week is, what is... Are we going to go for the most? Maybe your, maybe your most. Your what most? is your... What is our... And then you what? can let us know in the comments below what your most underrated. But just for the purposes of the title, maybe the most. The most, yeah. Underrated match in WrestleMania, in WWE WrestleMania History. Hashtag WWE, hashtag WrestleMania, hashtag yes. WrestleMania 39, hashtag... Goes Hollywood. Goes Hollywood, hashtag Hollywood, hashtag The Rock. The, What's John the most Cena. underrated match? It's, it's a tough one because there is... I mean, I, I don't envy the task of Jack Atkins recently, like recently last year when he watched every single WrestleMania match. It was his whole year. It was his whole year. He, he, he watched every single match. So he knows more than anyone this answer. We could phone a friend and get him involved. But I, for me personally, the match that always springs to mind is Edge versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 24. Yo. Because it seems to be like one of the forgotten streak... Thanks, Jack, for that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the forgotten about streak matches. Yes. Where everyone goes, oh, WrestleMania 25 was when Undertaker went on a long streak of like the match of the night. I'm just looking how long that match was. But Edge versus Undertaker was like... I was a massive Edge fan at the time. I was thinking Edge is undefeated at WrestleMania as well. Undertaker's undefeated. Mm -hmm. It's for the world title. There is no way Edge is losing this match. He's going to beat The Undertaker Mm because he's my boy. And it didn't go that way. But the match is really, really great. You've got the Charles Robinson running down the ramp. Full speed that's been gifted Mm. so many times. You've got the Edge heads getting involved. La Familia's on the outside. Just for me, that was like the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. 
but it's so underrated and, and, and forgotten about. I think that, it, yes, a lot of, I think our suggestions, because mine is also a match that is thought of highly, mm -hmm. but maybe in the context of the rest of the Undertaker streak, it's been slightly buried by like, the is, Michaels yeah. matches and yeah. Punk and, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a great answer. I, I really like that match. I like the idea of Edge doing so much homework on the Undertaker. Yeah, exactly. He's schooled them. Tom? Uh, it's kind of forgotten in the annals of time simply because the show that it was on, uh, WrestleMania 20, Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero for the WWE yeah. title. Whoa. Really, really fun match. Two guys who are proficient wrestlers, but also incredible entertainers mm. uh, that, that wove a really, really fun story that they kind of turned around really quick. Because you had Eddie beat Brock Lesnar at No Way Out. And then within a couple of weeks, you had Kurt Angle turn heel and then become the top contender mm. to face Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. It all happened dead quick, mm. but it all felt very right. Mm. And it was told well, great match, brilliantly creative finish that played up Eddie Guerrero's... The boot. Yeah, like Eddie Guerrero was seen like, like acting like his foot's hurt, so starts taking his boot off. Uh, the angle sees him taking his boot off. It's like a shark smelling blood in the water. Yes. And Eddie tries to get away. Angle grabs his foot, goes to put an ankle lock on and pulls the boot away yeah. as he does. And this leads to Eddie doing a roll up and getting the three. Yeah. Uh, wonderfully cheeky finish after a really good match. Obviously, the, the final scene of that WrestleMania 20 is one that uh, we kind of don't think about. No, yeah. We sort of disassociate from because of the people involved. And I think that whole WrestleMania kind of gets lost in the mm. annals of time because of that. So I want to give it its, it's yeah. flowers, if you will. Eddie and Guerrero, Kurt Angle. the greatest WWE wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. And and, on a, uh, and in Madison Big Square time. Garden. Yeah, yeah. Made um, night. I'll go for one that I don't think is underrated in terms of people don't appreciate the match itself. I just think it might have been um, lost to time as well. Mm. Also, maybe younger fans won't have just ever seen it, really, maybe, um, which is WrestleMania 8, I believe, Bret Hart, Roddy Piper. Um, nice. which I think was Roddy as IC he was going in as IC champion yes Brett came in as like they played up the whole they've known each other for years they're family I friends I gotta tell you how much I love your mother how much I yeah. love your family she'd make us the sandwiches and yeah. all that that great mm. promo before He's, they're both faces but Roddy's being condescending Brett's trying to prove himself and the story the, the, it had a unique um, dynamic heading into it and then that lent itself so well to Brett's quite realistic style they have quite a competitive really wrestly match like that, but then mm -hmm. it gets into a bit of a brawl. There's the famous instance of Brett blading, mm -hmm. but pretending that it was an accident. Yeah. And then later on in the show, Ric Flair tries the same trick, but just blatantly, just like, he's not quite as subtle not as Brett subtle. about it. No. Um, but I had a second answer, which also featured Flair, which was his match with The Undertaker in 2002, yeah, 18. yeah, yeah, 2002. Yeah. Um, because of the moment when Arn gets in and yeah, Gives the best spine buster Great ever. Spine. Oh. He, set up he was probably like 24 at the time. You know, he's, he just looked <laughs> off. <old. laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a phenomenal spine buster. Yeah. Like, he, 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 like he burst into existence, hit the spine buster, and then does that, as you but say, that, roll. Ha, yeah. and then a combat roll oh. out. It was so good. picture perfect. And the crowd, even though they won, Taker probably... No, Taker was the heel, actually. Taker right? was the heel. Yeah. But, he was booger red at that point. Yes, but no matter, like, the, some of the crowd will still have wanted Taker to win, but even they... The, the pop was huge for Arn. Um, but Flair, like, his confidence was really rocked and shocked going into mm. that match. It was Undertaker that went, we're going to have this match and you're going to be brilliant. Yeah. Like, they, he did it. There was a spot in that where he goes to throw Rick into the corner to do the Flair flop and Flair misses it. So Undertaker goes and picks him and goes, we're doing it again. <laughs> we're going to do it until you get it right. Yeah. And, if, wow. and the second time round, he lands it and, it's, and it works. And I think it's the first time that the streak is acknowledged because as Undertaker leaves, he just does that. I think he's he 10, he maybe. Counts he counts 10 on his hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's the first time we go, oh, that's a thing. That's a mm. thing. So I was cheeky there. I gave two. Does anyone have any more? Well, the 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 the, 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 the Piper Brett one as well. The the best part of that was obviously the finish where Piper, who was notoriously a baddie, had the ring bell, and and was teasing using it to beat Bret Hart with not little Bret, and uh, and then changed his mind. But in doing so, managed to get was a roll up maybe. I think and so. He, and he lost the match and lost the title. It's a great. If anyone hasn't seen it, do check it it's out. Good. Um, also, people, I think, tend to think of Roddy as, uh, rightly so, like a big personality and a big character. Mm. But he can still wrestle really well cool. as well in the ring, yeah. especially with the right opponent. And Brett is like a really good opponent. Oh, he's the perfect person oh, to have yes. in the ring with. I'm trying to think if there's any other recent... Oh, one match. WrestleMania 28, mm -hmm. CM Punk, Chris Jericho. Oh, it's right. it's a mm. WWE Championship match that was overshadowed I see, I don't by the Rock. That fondly, maybe because of that. Yeah, it's overshadowed by the Rock. Cena. the build to the match was not that great. Basic, the yeah. If you, it was like, oh, stuff. Punk, you're an actually you're an alcoholic, but you're straight edge. Your mom was an alcoholic. You're yeah. an alcoholic. It was terrible, terrible, terrible build. But the match itself was great. It was like, oh, this is like two 
as it, well, two of the best in the world. The, well, best in the world, and then what was what was Jericho's? The best in the world for CM Punk. Oh, and the best in the world at what I do. At what yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Those two going at it in uh, the one of the main events of WrestleMania 28 mm. was great. Loved yes. it, but it was very underrated. Would you say that from Mania 21, Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle was underrated, or is I, that I rated? remember it as like it's one of I don't know, but I'm it's one of my favorite Mania it's, matches. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's very very good. So that one's very much rated though, rather than I think underrated. yeah yes because there's stuff that spanned from that that I think people remember quite fondly. Yeah, I was gonna say just given the whole stuff around Bray Wyatt at the minute, the Five Life Funhouse match was actually really good. It was really it good. Wasn't it wasn't really was, a match. It was underrated in the run up, but I think it was really appreciated afterwards, right? Maybe. Like at, at people were time, going, This I, is gonna be crap. <laughs> like I think at the time I think it served a purpose because it was just as we were going into lockdown. Mm. Yeah. Which was something like something wild like oh, three God. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three years ago the other day. It feels today. like it was last week. Yeah. yeah. It's now the day recording. Three yeah. years ago, but as you're watching yeah, this, three yeah, years yeah. ago yesterday. Yes. Right. Uh, and and I remember like we all went home, it was all that sort of fuzzy feeling of uncertainty. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so then we had WrestleMania, like from the performance center. And then and it was a lot of it was just a case of do you know what? WWE did what they always say that they do. That particular weekend they said oh, we provide escapism yeah and that weekend for a small amount of time mm. i was in the discourse talking about what was that what what was that great boneyard match what was that firefly funner and you did forget yeah, yeah. you know yeah, so that's there was fair. so they, they provided some escapism there i yeah. wouldn't say it was i'll always underrated i'll always feel, maybe feel bad for but also feel grateful for dream mcintyre that year for again his big moment and it being in yeah. front of no one, it was quite sad. And then us hoping that he'd get his big moment at Clash of the Castle. And that. Uh, well, he did get his big moment. He got a sign with Tyson Fury. He did get a sign with Tyson Fury. So. I've got another one to round this off and to provide yeah. maybe something for the thumbnail as well. Because um, <laughs> uh, it was famously slated uh, by Meltzer. But if you watch it back, I think it does its job pretty well. And that's Hogan Andre at WrestleMania 3. Yeah. Um, I know some modern eyes maybe don't look at it too kindly, especially because I had to follow Savage and Steamboat, which is like <laughs> the, the match. Yeah, mm. but then Hogan and Andre do the sports entertainment thing to a T. Like Hogan plays the hero, yeah. Andre is the giant villain, and and it just it just does everything. You just need to listen to the crowd reaction. It's just it's a spectacle. Match. Yes, yeah. it's a spectacle. And and the more you learn about the lore and the story behind that, the more you appreciate it. Like the fact that Paul Orndorff was like in his gear, ready to go like hours before the event mm. because Andre was so pagged by that point that they were like in case the in case it doesn't go off it's 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 going to be Hulk versus Orndorff I know the like, lead main event at WrestleMania before that but if you're Orndorff are you like secretly I hope I get in this yeah. <laughs> of course <laughs> the, you are look at the silver dome yeah. brother <laughs> well, it's the same Paul Orndorff that went they said, the doctor said Paul your arm's knackered you can either go and have surgery or carry on this house show cage match run with Hogan and oh, he went no. well it's obvious see you later Tom <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and you know and, and it led to all sorts of health issues down the line for him oh, rest his soul yeah so Paul Orndorff I think probably was a little bit like oh, is he, are you sure he's alright yeah. can... oh I've got another one Bobby oh. and Coach oh, oh. oh. well uh, uh, WrestleMania 2 Bundy and Hogan I watched yeah. that and I thought that was absolutely fine yeah. people yeah. often go oh Whoa. But, okay. but the thing is... No! Oh, it's rubbish! It's no, it's a cage oh, match. Oh, yeah, bore off. It's rubbish. But the Plus key word that you said format. there was, I was fine. That's 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 rating it. Maybe, that's not yeah, underrating yeah. it. That's just rating it. Okay, okay. It was yeah, perfectly yeah. rated. <laughs> well, we'll you see. Talk to yourself about Let that Let me know one. what your most underrated WrestleMania matches are in the comment section Hogan down below. Bundy. Thank you very much for watching this edition of the Cult Holic Wrestling Podcast. Tom, what have you got in the works for us? Have you got anything you'd like to it's promote? All, at the moment, just all eyes on the podcast feed, daily wrestling news podcasts uh, heading into WrestleMania. Do check out Andrew's lovely chat with the WWE 2K devs. Uh, they give us some details behind 2K23. They talk quite openly about 2K20 in that. Right. Uh, and right. they talk about how much they, they value, appreciate the community creation world. Oh. There's loads of love for the community creators across. So if you're one of those, then the devs love you. Uh, so this, it's a great chat that Andrew had. Really enjoyed listening to it, and it's and it's there for you right now on the podcast feed. Uh, on Sun, no new classic SmackDown review this week for obvious reasons. Uh, we are excited to get back to it next weekend. Cool. Uh, you'll hear Jack on the podcast feed on Sunday. Yes, yeah. I'm recording my matches of the month for March. You might be saying it's not the end of March yet. I'm doing a special episode for uh, WrestleMania week, basically, because there's going to be so, there's <coughs> excuse gonna me, there's going to be so many shows, so many matches that I thought that needs its own podcast otherwise things will get just too bloated so mm, there we too go. Mm. Uh, Fraser 
Uh, I've got worse shows ever coming out this Sunday, I think, about dinner time. So you can sit down your dinner. Oh. Watch that. It's a, it's a WrestleMania special. I don't want to spoil it too much. <laughs> um, but Luke's been working hard on the edit on that one. So I'm very excited to see it finished and uh, up on the channel. And then it's WrestleMania week, guys. So you excited? Be, oh, yeah. There's, there's going to be, be lots of fun content coming in. There's reaction week. streams. There's going to be uh, WTF moments. There's going to be what happened out for both oh, nights. Yeah. There's going to be so much stuff. Uh, also, I have a weirdest episodes. I mean, Fraser would like to point out, it's not the same series. Totally but different. We understand why people are confused. Yeah. But Fraser Yeah, one says weirdest, one says worst. We Fraser, simply cannot fathom Fraser, the difference. Fraser has been getting comments saying, this isn't Jack. <laughs> oh, Jack, where's, where's Jack going? Um, um, it's fine. We're totally different. One says worst shows. The other's weirdest episodes. Oh. Totally if different. only there was a clue. Um, yeah, totally different. That they were different. So and we look not the same. So there, no, it's true. So there we have, I wish I was as tall as you. So there we have it. <laughs> Miss Pac Man has a bow in her. This young. Um, so uh, that's all the content coming up. I, I have a weirdest episodes in the works. Once Luke's finished working on yours, yep. we're getting him straight on mine. Oh, he's a workhorse. No rest for you. Um, and then uh, just all the stuff I mentioned already. Yeah. And obviously, Tom's. Uh, sorry, my Match of the Month thing on Tom's audio feed on the podcast. Well, it's our audio yeah. feed. You curate the audio oh, feed. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to plug my Just Giving page if that's not too cheeky. I think it. we need yes. to talk about that, please. Thank you. I am um, beginning the Thursday after WrestleMania, walking from coast to coast across England for uh, the National Autistic Society. Uh, I've been doing my big walks, which I got into over lockdown, really, and then I gradually built them up, and I've done a few multi-day ones now, but this is going to be rather long. For my level of walking ability... I don't want to push myself too far. I've gone quite safe. It's going to take me about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Just Giving page. The link is my pinned tweet at Jack the Jobber on Twitter. And I'd like to say a massive thank you as well to everybody who's donated or even just shared the page so far. It's been a much bigger response than I anticipated. And that's lovely. It's been great so to see. You. You'll hear Jack see. talking about it more on BBC Radio Newcastle <gasps> on Sunday. Oh, I've always dreamed of being on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be my second appearance on a BBC radio station. There you after go. After I was on Radio Kent. Oh. Still don't know why. There, you go, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching as well. Thank you to Joel for hey. doing all the important editing stuff. Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, with our thoughts on WrestleMania. Well, I, I will be. And we'll yep. see you very soon.